All right, you can just have a seat over here. Come on in. Just have a seat over here. Yep. Kind of odd in here. You have to do some stuff in the there. All right. So just to let you know right away, Jennifer, everything in this room is being videotaped and audio taped. Okay. okay. That's actually for your protection and mine. If anybody ever asks us what we talked about, there's a record of it, okay? okay. So just for the record, it is the uh, 22nd of November, 2010. We're at the uh, five district station in the town of Markham. Uh, my computer right now says 2.39 in the afternoon, okay? Uh, just for the record, my name is Detective William Gates. You can just call me Bill here today. And what do you like to be called? Jen, Jen? Yep. What do you prefer? Jen or Jennifer? It doesn't Either? Okay, so Jen, um, you're aware that the um, audio tape and everything's on. Um, it's the same as last time. Okay, you've been here on two other occasions, I understand, on the uh, 9th of November and I believe again on the 11th of November. Is that correct? Okay. And do you know why we're here today? Yeah, regarding what? Yeah. Oh, what happened at my home? Okay. And that happened, uh, there was a home invasion, for the record, there was a home invasion at your residence on the 8th of November 2010, is that correct? And uh, your residence is located at 238 Helen Avenue in the town of Markham, that's mm -hmm. correct? Okay. And as a result of that home invasion, um, your father, uh, Han Pan, was actually shot and your mother, uh, Bika Pan, was actually killed. Is that correct? Yeah, you'll have to speak up a little bit just so I can hear you. Sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, so that's what we're going to discuss here today. On previous occasions, um, a commissioner of OS has come in and you've sworn the uh, video statement, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And on those sworn video statements, you promise to tell the truth. Okay. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to have to get you to speak up or, or we can pick it up. Yes. Yeah. And what was the, what was your understanding that if you did not tell the truth, what would happen? That there would be a jail consequence. There could be. Okay. There are specific charges uh, for fabricating evidence uh, for public uh, mischief or obstructing police and a police investigation. You understand that, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so the same thing applies here today, okay? Um, that uh, if you were um, to make a false statement, um, if you were to lie to the police or mislead the police in an investigation, uh, you could be charged with those offenses of public mischief, uh, fabricating evidence, or obstruct police. Do you understand that? Okay. Then, of course, um, if you had anything to do with the actual homicide itself, uh, of course you could be charged with murder. you understand that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, do you understand what your rights are here today? Do you understand what your rights are here today? What do you mean? Everybody has rights. Do you know what your rights are? As a citizen, do you know what your rights are? That you don't have to speak to the police? You, we, they, they went through some things with you before. You don't have to give a statement if you don't want to. Do you understand that? No, I do. Okay. And it's your choice whether you give a statement or not? Okay. you understand that? That was on that form that they read out to you, and it said you, that it's your choice. you understand that, though? I do not. Okay, all right. Um, and what I tell everybody that I speak to is that all of our rights are guaranteed, and they're guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which states that when a person's been arrested or detained, well, they must be advised their rights to counsel or rights to a lawyer. So first of all, you're not under arrest here, okay? You're not being detained. That door there, that's not locked. It's just closed to ensure our privacy. Okay? So if at any time you want to leave, please feel free to do so. Okay? 
If any time you want me to stop these proceedings, just say so and I will. If at any time you did want to speak to a lawyer, you just have to tell me and you can speak to a lawyer in private. We can phone a lawyer and you can speak to them privately on the phone. Do you understand that? Okay. Now, have you ever heard of legal aid? Well, okay. I've like the term. Is yeah, you've heard the term before. Do you know what it means? Okay, so legal aid lawyers are lawyers available to give people free legal advice. Okay, and they're available 24 hours a day uh, for people uh, at a police station, and they're available to everyone. And these lawyers give people free legal advice. Okay, so that's another option available to you here today. Do you understand that? Yeah. And you understand these rights? Yeah. Okay. And do you wish to speak to a lawyer? Well, I, I just advise people what their rights are, but I can't tell you that you should or you shouldn't. Okay, so that's fine. If you change your mind, let me know. Okay? Now, um, as discussed before, okay, in relation to this case, um, you don't have to say anything to the police in relation uh, to this murder, okay? Um, but whatever you do say may be given as evidence in court, okay? And if it had anything to do with you, that evidence could be used against you. Do you understand that? You just have to say yes or no. Yes. Yes, okay. Um, now, we've never met before, right? No. I just brought you from the front to the back here, yes. and we didn't discuss the case. No. no. Okay, so when, when I meet somebody for the first time, um, I have to let them know that I don't want what you've said to any other police officer in this case to influence you or make you feel like you even have to talk to me here today, okay? And whatever you've said to date uh, to anyone about this case, you don't have to repeat that, nor do you have to say anything further, okay? But whatever you do say, that may be given as evidence. Do you understand that? Okay. okay. Just tell me your understanding of what I've been telling you. Just tell me what you understand me to say in your own words. Take your time. That I don't have to say anything, but, but if I want a lawyer, I can have one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want anything anybody else has said to you to make you feel like you have to even talk to me. I don't want them influencing anything that may have said previously. Do you know what I mean? Okay. okay, I don't want you to feel forced into talking to me. Okay? All right. Um, do you have any other questions? Do you understand? Okay. Now, what, um, since you and I have never met, um, of course I know a lot about you because I've been following the investigation. Okay, but I don't know everything about you. And I hate talking to people when I haven't formally met them, okay? So if I were to ask one of your friends about you or um, you wanted to tell me yourself, what would, how would you describe Jennifer Pan? Just maybe a bit about your history, where you grew up and where you went to school. I grew up here. In, I was born and grew up in Toronto. Okay. And I like to play piano. Yep. I hear you're pretty good at it too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what else do you like to do? I like to figure skate. Yep. Okay, and you're pretty good at that too? I haven't done it for a while. Yeah, but at one point it was a passion of yours? Yeah. Yeah, okay, what else? I'm going back to school. Okay, and when's that? Well, starts in January. Okay, and what are you going to be taking? Biotech engineering. Okay, and what's your future aspirations then? Okay, just hold on a second.
Okay, we're, we're having technical difficulties here. <laughs> okay, so that's why they interrupted me. What we're going to do is, if you don't mind holding tight there, I'm just going to move my equipment to the other room. Okay, and then I'll come over and we'll move over there next door, okay? I'm just not comfortable being on my own. Okay, I'm going to be right here though. Okay. okay? Yeah, if you have a problem, just knock on the door and I'll come right over. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to be three seconds. I just have to take the uh, stuff here and move it over there and then I'll come and get you, okay? Test of the video equipment, 5 District, 22nd of November. Alright, so we're going to switch rooms. Uh, the equipment's not working over there. We had a technical problem here, but I have had every, it has been audio taped. We just lost the video and audio from the video machine itself. Okay, so if you don't mind just coming across the hall, we'll walk right across the other here. And the chair at the bottom there. It's down here if you don't mind. Yep. Okay. So, just for the record, this room is being videotaped and audio taped just like the other one okay and i'm just going to grab my chair from across the way okay Right now, we're in uh, the Sanford video room across the hall from the first one. By my computer now, it's 2.52. Um, the officer advised me, the Detective Cook, that we're having a problem with the other room. The video and audio went down. Uh, but everything that we talked about has been um, audio taped uh, on our portable audio. Okay? All right. Now, um, just for a recap, um, we reviewed uh, why uh, that you're here today to discuss um, the home invasion that occurred at your residence at 238 Helen Avenue on the uh, 8th of November, okay, and that um, in that incident um, your mother was killed and your father were, uh, was um, shot uh, but survived, right? And we reviewed um, what your rights are here today, that you didn't have to speak to the police, um, that anything that you do say to the police here today could be evidence, is that correct? Yeah, you just have to speak a little louder. Yeah. Okay. And um, that if you had any involvement, um, uh, well, first of all, if you provided a false statement um, or lied to the police, 
uh, a person could be charged or you could be charged for um, obstruct police, uh, public mischief, or fabricating evidence. You understand that? Yes. Yeah. And that if you had any involvement um, uh, in that home invasion, then you could be facing charges of murder and attempted murder. Okay, do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. And um, anything that you do say to us in regards to that home invasion uh, is being recorded here, and that could be used as evidence in court. Okay? You understood that? And that you don't have to say anything to us in, in relation to this case, but whatever you do say may be given as evidence. Right? You understood that? Yes. Okay, and lastly, that um, we've never met before, so I don't want anything any other officer has said to you to influence you or make you feel like you have to say anything to me here today. And whatever you've said previously, you don't have to repeat that, nor do you have to say anything further. But whatever you do say, that may be given as evidence. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So we were just starting to talk about yourself, and um, you were telling me that you do or have had a passion for the piano, and uh, you do like figure skating. Okay. What are some of your other likes? What are the things you like to do? Sit and watch TV with my friends. Yep. Okay. And who are your specific TV buddies? Adrian. Okay. And his last name? Mm -hmm. Okay. And anyone else? Um, I people I talked to on the phone, but none that I watch TV. Okay. Now, do you have a particular best friend right now? Who would you say is your best friend? No, who that you get along with, that you have a special relationship with, like a best friend. Who's the friend that you like the most or that you get along with the best? Daniel. Daniel? Okay. And what's his last name? Daniel. Okay. And uh, why do you say that you're best friends? I wouldn't say best friend, but uh, he's able to comfort me and call me. Okay. And how does he do that? We've been friends for a long time, and I don't know, it's just, we used to date, and it's just part of me still like, kept calm and everything, reassures me something. Yeah, okay. So you have history. Okay. And I know you've said some of these things to the police before, but I just want to go over it for my own understanding. So when did you first date Daniel? And how did you actually meet? We went to school together. Okay. And what school did you go to? Mary Ward. And uh, is that a Catholic school? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And when did you start going to Mary Ward? In 2000. Okay. So, 2000. so you started grade 9 there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And in elementary school, where did you go? St. Barnabas. What's that? St. Barnabas. Oh, Barnabas, okay. Um, and do you practice... Um, Catholicism, or do you practice a different? Are you, are you Catholic? I uh, I do practice Catholicism, but uh, I do believe in some Buddhist beliefs. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. So you have uh, um, Christian beliefs uh, that are both Catholic and Buddhist uh, religions. Okay. Um, and how long uh, were you baptized when you were born? Or okay. And were your parents Catholics then? My father. Okay, your father. Okay. And what about your mom? Split. Okay, so that's where you get the, the combination. Okay. And, um, yep. Growing up, did you guys go to church every Sunday, or how did that go? Not every Sunday, but we went um, for holidays and special occasions. Okay. And you also had religion in school, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And um, did they go to uh, church at school or not? 
in elementary school, I had a church next to me. Yes, okay. I had the same thing, so that's why I'm asking. <laughs> okay, and basically we went every Friday morning uh, to church because uh, we were right beside it, right? So um, they had a special service for us. Okay. Now, what else can you tell me about growing up? Okay. And um, tell me about that schedule. School, eight piano, a little swimming, a little karate for a couple of years. So, you know, so it was a steady, steady schedule. Okay. And how did you get into skating? To be honest, I think my parents just applied. Okay. And I just took with And how old were you when you started? Seven or eight, I think. Okay, so young. And how long did you stay in it? Okay, so quite a long time. Okay, and what made you stop going? I tore my ACL a lot. Okay, so injuries. Okay, if you didn't get injured, would you still be doing it? I hope so. Yeah, okay, so that's nice. And did you, as far as that, did you do uh, like competition skating or? Yeah. Okay. And how did you do with that? I wasn't at the top of the pack, but I just was in middle average. Yeah, so that's good though. But you did actually enjoy it. Uh, it was more than just going for uh, competition. You enjoyed actually doing I, it. I, pet, I was petrified of the competition. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and where would be the farthest place you would go for a competition? Like, would you go outside of this area? Yes. Because uh, I actually started, I said uh, Scarborough in Toronto. That's where I trained and grew up. Yep. Uh, it wasn't until later that I moved up to Richmond Hill, uh, just the last year or two. Right. Um, but we went everywhere from um, Orangeville, yep. to Saga, just in and around Southern Ontario. Yeah. Okay. And tell me about the piano. When did you start with piano? When I was Wow. Okay. And you're still doing it, I understand. Okay. And I hear you actually teach. Yeah, I taught a bit, and yeah. I'm still working towards that final qualification. Okay, and what do you, what do you have to do to uh, get that final qualification? I have, uh, I believe, another three exams. Okay, and are the exams practical, or are they practical and... Practical, uh, like, practical and written. Written, okay. And, like an exam, how long would that take to write? Writing exams take about two to three hours. Okay. And are you in that process right now, or? I was, yeah. Yeah, okay. And so, when do you hope to complete that? I was hoping in June. June, by June, June you would? 7 11. Yeah, okay. And um, so you went from uh, a student and now to a teacher, is what, uh, yes. okay. And um, although you don't have your highest papers, you were still able to teach students? Yes. Yeah, okay. What does the actual full papers give you? What will you be able to do with that? It's just a formality. Uh, an achievement? Yes. Okay. Credentials? Okay. Uh, can you charge more? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you've been uh, teaching, um, what would you charge for lessons? Mainly they were just family friends, so it was just $10, half an hour. Yeah, okay. And how many students would have you been teaching? For the years, just three. Okay. Over what time period? Three, four years. Four years, three. okay. All right. Um, and do you have any students right now? Or? No. Okay. And why not? Uh, the students I were teaching, they went to high school and lost interest. Oh, okay. Yeah, too big for panel. <laughs> yeah, I took it in grade school too, but uh, I, I think I got, I went to grade 7 in it, I think. Like mm -hmm. in, when I was in grade 7, I stopped taking it, but uh, I still remember swans on the lake. <laughs> I didn't know how to play that, that's about it. <laughs> um, now, I understand. What kind of jobs have you had? Um, serving jobs. 
serving jobs. Okay. And when was your last one? Um, Boston Pizza. That morning too. Okay. And when's the last time you worked there? Year, two years ago, I think, a year and a half, two years. Okay. And was that your last uh, serving job? Okay. And previous to that? He said Mary. Okay. And what time period did you work there? Four years ago, okay. Why did you switch from um, East Side to Boston Pizza? Um, when I went over to Boston, I did I did both for a little bit. Okay, yeah. And I found that Boston Pizza was uh, easier and better. Okay, <laughs> better tips or? Yeah. It was <laughs> okay. easier because uh, less unlimited stuff to run and okay. more appreciative guests. Okay. The experience was better for you. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, but you haven't done that in about two years, okay? And any particular reason? Um, just try to concentrate on piano. And okay. All right, on your studies. Pardon me. On your studies. My piano studies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what is it that you're hoping you're going back to school? What is your ultimate goal um, for school? I want to finish this three-year biotech course. Yep. And see how the field is after for three years because I know it's booming now but I'm not sure how it's going to be in three years. Okay. And what would the number, what job would you like to get from it? Uh, like what are some of the jobs that you would get with a degree in that? I haven't really looked much into it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, now, if you could pick any job yourself, not talking about anybody else, but if you could pick for yourself, what would it be? I want to be a piano teacher on my, when I come home. But any day time, I'd like to have a, a simple, maybe like a lab technician job, just work eight, like eight hours a day, and then come home and teach piano. Okay. And so why don't you do that? Uh, I actually did try to apply for a uh, pharmacy technician, but I wasn't eligible to enter. Okay. And any particular reason? Or? I probably just didn't have the, call, the, the needed credits for it. Okay. And uh, high school credits, you mean? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and have this other course you're on, you've been accepted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And from that, I guess you could be a technician, though? Uh, I, believe, I believe that if I get through the first year okay, I, w I will be eligible to transfer to the technician courses. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Um, now, I understand that um, you mentioned a schedule, okay? Um, whose decision to have you on a schedule? Who's well, it was more along the lines of uh, where I was at my skating level yep. and what times were needed to be at certain places. Yeah, oh, okay. So, but basically you didn't have time for much uh, other than school, skating, yeah. piano. That's a lot. Mm. Yeah, okay. Now, um, eventually you were discussing Daniel. What happened with that relationship? I hid it from my parents at first. They didn't agree with me having a boyfriend. Okay. And uh, once they found out, they didn't like the fact that he was of mixed race. Okay. And uh, they told me to stop seeing him. Okay. And how did that make you feel? That uh, he was the person who just filled an empty void for me. So it felt that a part of me was missing. Um, in, when did you feel the part was missing? 
mean? When you broke up, you felt the part was missing? Is that what you're saying? When, when they first told me to stop seeing him, stop talking to him, I just, I felt like a part of me was missing and I fell into a little bit of depression. Okay. And how old were you when this happened? 20, 2021. Okay, so you're 24 uh, now, mm -hmm. right? When you're 21, they told you to stop seeing him, or 2021? And how old were you when you first started dating? Uh, 17. Okay. And from 17 to 2021, they didn't know about the relationship? No. Okay. How did they find out? Um, one day when my mother came to pick me up, uh, she saw me with him. He had dropped me off. Okay. He dropped you off? Uh, at Pacific Mall. And my mother was coming to pick me up at Pacific Mall. Okay. And somehow, they saw each other, I guess? Oh, my mother saw me um, hugging kiss and goodbye. Okay, that gave it away. <laughs> okay. And then, when she asked about it, what did you tell her? I told her that, you know, we've been dating a little bit, but mainly it was just when we were in school, we saw each other. Okay. All right. And so, was that the whole truth or not? It was at that point in time. Okay. What happened next, then? I tried to bring him home. Uh, my mother at first was like, you know, bring him home, let us meet him. And when I brought him home, uh, they didn't, they automatically didn't like him for some reason. Okay. And that's when they told me to stop seeing him. Okay. And what is it, you, you mentioned already that he was mixed race. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is what? Filipino and Chinese. Okay. And your parents themselves, what? Uh, races are they? Vietnamese and Chinese. Okay. What was the problem with um, Chinese and uh, Filipino? They didn't see him as a Chinese person. Okay. They thought him as a Filipino person. Okay. And they associated Filipino people with perfect people. Okay. So that was their personal belief or personal outlook on Filipino I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Okay, so you were told to uh, stop seeing him. So what happened then? At first I stopped for a while. Um, but like I said, I just felt really empty and I felt just depression and uh, okay. I started talking to him again. Okay. And how would you get a chance to see him? Um, seeing him was really difficult. Um, okay. I would try to see him before a class here and there. Um, not much time, but uh, sometimes I'd ask a friend of mine, Gary, who's a mutual friend of ours. Okay. He'd come and tell my parents that he was picking me up for dinner, and the three of us would go up to dinner together. Okay. So he'd pick you up at the house, yeah. Gary? Yeah. And what race is he? He's white. He's a white guy? Yeah. Okay. And did they have a problem with white guys, or? No. No. They didn't have a problem with you going to dinner with uh, Gary? No. No. And um, they were just against this guy? Daniel? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, were they against you going out with friends? A little bit, yeah. Okay, but they let you go with Gary, so... Well, it was, like I said, they didn't say yes often, but okay. when they did. All right, so, and then what would happen? You would then, Gary would take you to Daniel? Uh, we would meet up at like our sushi place. Okay, where was that? Uh, sometimes we'd go to uh, Taste of Japan, and yeah. we tried Sushi on 7 once. Sushi on 7? Yeah. Okay. And where's that first place located? Uh, Woodbine and John. Woodbine and John? Yeah. And where, what about the other one? Uh, 7 and Kennedy. And, um, so you like sushi? My friend Gary likes sushi. Okay. <laughs> and how did you meet Gary? Through Daniel. Through Daniel? Yeah. Okay. Um, but he's become your friend as well? Yeah. Okay. And when's the last time you would have spoke to him? It's been a while. It's been a while? Been a good three, four months. Three, four months. And, um, since you and Daniel broke up, how often would you see Gary? see him when he stop by my house sometimes if my mom was at work. Okay. And how many times do you think Gary took you to see Daniel? 
three or four times. Three or four times, okay. Mm -hmm. And when would the last time have been? Sometime in the summer, I believe. Okay. And where does Gary actually live? Uh, he's in Ajax Pickering. Ajax Pickering, okay. Uh, have you ever been to his place? Yes. Where about does he live? Exactly. No, he drove and. Okay. What does he drive? A um, the navy blue car with really dark tinted windows. Okay. You know, you don't know what kind of car. Uh, I believe it's an Impala. Impala. Okay. Now, how has Daniel taken it when your parents said that uh, you couldn't see him anymore? How did he take it? He was hurt. Yeah. Okay. Um, and how did you feel? Also hurt. Also hurt. Okay. Um, now, after high school, what did you do for schooling? I didn't. Okay. Um, but I lied to my parents. Okay. That. So tell me about that. What happened there? Um, what was their impression, and what were you doing in the meantime? They thought that I was going to school at Ryerson for the first couple of years and then I said I'd transfer to UT. Okay. Um, but I was actually working in the okay. daytime. Okay. And where were you staying? At the first two, two, three years I was staying, I was coming back home every day. Um, but my final year I said that it was difficult. Yeah. And so I would stay at Daniel's place. Okay. So you actually lived together for a year? Well, it was his parents' place. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so where would you stay in that house then? They had a spare bedroom. Okay. Um, but when his parents got more comfortable, they let me stay with him. Okay. All right. So you were, you slept in the same room for a while? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, is it fair to say that you had an intimate relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And of course your parents didn't know about that. No. No. Okay. And how long was the relationship intimate, would you say? You've been dating for seven years almost. At what point did it become intimate? Uh, I'd say after high school sometime. Yeah, okay. Um, and his parents were, I guess, more liberal than your parents? Their par his parents, uh, they loved they, they me. Yeah. yeah, okay. And um, they recognized that you loved each other. Yeah. And so they let you stay in the same... Uh, you moved up to his room, or how did that work? Just next door. Okay. There were two rooms in the basement. No, and it's the main floor. On the main floor. Okay. And where were the parents' rooms? Across the way. Okay. Right. Um, I'm guessing that sometimes you sneak into each other's rooms before they let you do it? No. No? You didn't? No. <laughs> okay. I'm just thinking what young people <laughs> would do. Okay. Um, but I'll, how long did you end up staying in the same room before you moved back home? So you lived there for two years then? Like I still came home every weekend and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. But they thought, and they thought you were where? On campus? Uh, at a friend's place. Okay. All right. And if they phoned you, they would just call your I called them every morning. Okay. You cut it off. Okay. Um, how, what ended up, how did they find out you weren't going to school? They asked for records, and at first I wasn't able to. And then um, after I said I'd finished, um, I didn't feel that I needed. I could. I didn't feel that. I I told them I didn't want to do the pharmacy, like pharm pharmacist. I want to be a technician. Yeah. I find the responsibility to uh, pharmacy so much. Yeah. Um, I told them that I wasn't really into it, and. Um, because I hadn't gone to school for it, but I had lied about it. I didn't want to go and pursue like applying for the job when I didn't have the qualifications. Okay. Um, and they thought you did have the qualifications? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And how did you try to prove to them that you did have the qualifications? Or I that bought online. Um, I got a friend of mine to buy online a fake uh, diploma. Okay. And who? what friend was that? Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Oh, Daniel? Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, what did it cost to buy a fake? Uh, 500 or something. Wow. Okay. And um, what happened when you gave them that then? They stopped counting me for a bit until okay. they realized I wasn't actually, I, I wasn't pursuing looking for the job hard okay. enough. So they were wondering what was going on. Okay. Then what was the next step? What ended up, uh, how did you end up back home, I guess? Uh, they called up my friend, uh, who I said I was staying with in the middle of the night, and uh, she was groggy and forgot what day it was, and so she was like, isn't she home, and I wasn't home. And okay. She messed up. <laughs> I don't blame her, but... No. Okay. And what was that friend's name? Topaz. Okay, so she was your cover. Okay, and she uh, basically uh, got caught because they called her in the middle of the night. Okay. And so then, what? Did, how did they approach you on that? They called me and they told me to come home immediately. Right now. <laughs> okay. And what happened? Um, that's when they're like, that's it. Like, you're staying home and we're going out and uh, we're going to get your life back on track. Okay. And what did you say to that plan? That I, I was still cre uh, doing my piano career, and I didn't feel that, like, I felt that my piano career could take me, and that um, I, didn't, I didn't understand the... Okay. So you expressed your opinion, uh, but they wanted more. They said that they wanted an education okay. and a degree. Okay. And so ultimately a plan was set up, I guess? Mm -hmm. And what was that plan? To go back to school. Okay. This January? Uh, actually, it was supposed to be for September. Yeah. But uh, they were, it was too late to apply. Okay. So I, I reapplied for January and got it. Okay. Now, when did this actually happen? That they found out every or that that they brought you home. Uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay. And so, um, what's been happening in the last year and a half then? Like okay. you finally got into school now, I understand. Mm -hmm. What's been happening for the last eighteen months? Just a lot of piano, like okay. catching up on my theories and stuff okay. that I've been slacking a little, and. Uh, pretty much piano and then I also did a little summer school to get my high school calc so I could apply it because I know calculus is a big thing in uh, applying for college and universities now. Okay. So I did do that one summer as well. Okay. And how, what's your math skills like? They were pretty good but they've gotten rusty over yeah. the years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you're not 18 or 19 anymore. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you haven't done it in a few years. Okay. Uh, so do you just, uh, is it home studies or is it uh, internet no, I studies? No, I did it at a summer school. Okay, you um, did it. Uh, but are you doing any correspondence? Uh, no. No, okay. And so what was the, when they said this is what's going to happen, what were all the rules that got put in place to make sure it happens? That I wouldn't see Daniel or talk to Daniel anymore. Okay. And that I'd, like, I'd, I'd like, and my friends would have to come and, to that over to the house rather than me go out. Okay. Um, uh, or if I went out with a friend, they need to like, call and make sure. Okay. And did you have a curfew or anything? Um, they always said before that nine o'clock usually would be home. Okay. And would they ever waiver on that? Uh, just once because it was my friend's wedding okay. uh, reception. Yeah, and how long did you get to stay with that night? Just 11. Okay. And how do you get to and from things when you want to go somewhere? Uh, they drive me. They drive you? Or the odd time if they know it's like a class that I always go to, they'll let me take the car. Okay. You do drive, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so how has that felt, being under those guidelines for the last 18 months? Mm, it was okay, like, uh, it wasn't the best feeling in the world because, you know, I just felt a little trapped. Okay. But uh, it's what I chose to be with my family. Okay. And so you made a choice between what? 
I'm living out on my own with Daniel and staying home with my parents. Okay. My life back here. Okay. And did they say you could stay out on your own if you wanted to? Um, at one point it was said, but my dad also said that he'd pre uh, hire a private investigator to follow me around. Okay. He didn't like that option? It's not that. It's just I, I chose to be with my parents. That wasn't even... Okay. Like he said it in argument, but yeah. it, I wasn't leaving. Okay. Did you feel you really had a choice or not? There was no choice because family always comes first. Okay. And where do you get that from? Where do you get that belief? Um, okay. So family's number one? Yes. Okay. Um, now, you said you were depressed. When were you depressed? What time period did that start? Uh, I was depressed in elementary school for a little bit. Okay. Um, like the depression started, I'd say, hard, very, about two years ago. Okay. At the time of this, or? Uh, what, what brought on the depression? Um, just, I wasn't happy with any parts of my life. Okay, which included what? Um, I regretted not going to school. Okay. Um, my piano wasn't going as fast as I was, I was liking. Um, uh, my friends were moving on with their lives and it felt that I was, wasn't going anywhere, I was kind of being left behind. Okay. And uh, that I didn't understand why uh, that at 2021 that I had to be home at 9 o'clock. I can see that. Okay. And what, how, what was the worst the depression got? Okay, and when did that happen? Just, I... Where did you do, where did you cut? Uh, on my wrist, and once people started noticing, I'd hide it other places, but okay. never twice in the same spot. So how many cuts do you have on you? Now, none. None? Yeah. They've healed? Okay. And did you want to kill yourself? Yes. When's the first time that you actually thought you would try and kill yourself? Nineteen. At nineteen? What was going on at that time that brought it on? Like my friends were in school and I wasn't. Okay. Um, I just came to the realization that, like, my family dynamic is very broad, uh, so, it's just, so I just felt everything was crum crumbling around me and I wasn't able to hold anything up for myself. Okay. And you really weren't able to tell your parents you weren't in school? Mm -hmm. So it was tough living a double life type thing? Yes. But is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, um, did you ever try to actually kill yourself? I tried once. And yeah, what did you do? I tried to overdose on sleep on and Tylenol. Okay, and what happened? I wasn't able to do it. Okay, how many did you take? Four or five. Four or five, okay. And where did that happen? In where your were bedroom. You? In your bedroom? Okay. Um, I guess you just got tired. Yeah. You woke up the next day. Well, like I stopped myself. I oh, okay. You, you, you could have taken more, but you didn't. Okay. All right. Um, when you were cutting, um, were you actually trying to kill yourself? No. no. What were you trying to do? Control one part of my life. Okay. And what did that do for you when you actually cut? It just, I was able to feel physical pain, so I didn't have to think of like, other pains in my life. Okay. So it was a distractor. Okay. Did anybody know you were cutting? Not at first. Okay. 
okay? Who was the first to find out? What did he say? He's like, don't be stupid. Okay. Uh, did your parents ever find out? They noticed it, but they never. They don't. I don't think they realized what it was. Yeah. Then okay. Um, what's the lowest you ever got? What was the lowest moment you ever had? and not gone to school and I was home alone and in the middle of arguments and I was feeling very alone. So he was kind of a bond while you were at home? Okay. And so you guys got along all right? As far as brother and sister go? Well, we, we, we had our moments, yeah. but uh, there's just an unsaid, unsaid bond. Yeah, we? which is nice. Okay. Uh, but when you were on your own, it was a lot tougher. You didn't have that ally in the house. Okay. Now, when you said there was fighting, what kind of fighting went on in the house? Bickering. About what were the issues? Housework. Housework, okay. And who was bickering? My parents. And who were they bickering at? Each other. Each other, okay. So there's some tension there. Okay. Um, how would you characterize their relationship over the last couple years? What do you mean by that? How has it been in the house for them as a couple? Mm, they put on a front there's not much of a relationship. Okay. And what what do you think the problem is? What's the issue? What happened? My mother took on a lot of responsibility. Okay. Doing everything, paying the bills, paying the house. She was just fed up with doing it by herself. Okay. So she was depressed too or not? I couldn't say. Okay. Um, who's the boss of the house then, would you say? Myself. Okay. And so, um, what does that mean? Pretty much his opinion is what Okay, so he has the final say on... And how did your mom take that? If you had a real problem, could you ever go to either one of them? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what would you and your mom discuss? Future plans. Okay. And um, did she agree with your father's plans or not? Sometimes. Okay. Ultimately, they wanted you to be educated, I guess, was their, is their goal, okay. Um, did you ever feel that they expected too much of you? How so? Comparison to other people. Okay, so who would they compare you to? Classmates, clubmates, cousins. Okay. And so some of them have been successful recently? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what did they say to you? Wish you could have been that person. Okay. So that's pretty hard, right? Hard to take for you? It's what I've heard all my life. So okay. Nothing. Okay. Um, now, was there ever any um, physical abuse in your household? 
you had to think about that. What did he? Well, just when I was when you're a kid, you know, just a little tap on the bottom. Okay, you got a spanking, but that's it. Okay, you were never um, injured or, no. and um, your mom and dad weren't physical with each other. No. Did you did you ever see them be physical with each other? No. No. Okay. Um, now. Do you feel, um, I get the feeling that um, they think you could do any job there is. Is that true or? I don't know. I guess my question for you is, did you ever feel like, I know you're smart and they believe you're very smart but did you ever feel you weren't as smart as what they thought that, that you were? Yeah. Okay, I get that feeling. Yeah. That it's pretty tough to live up to their expectations. Okay, like your dad ultimately would like to see you be like a doctor. That type of thing. And maybe uh, you can't do it. Right? And I'm not saying you can't, but I, I get the feeling that um, those were pretty high standards for anybody. Not everybody can be a doctor, okay? And, but they may have acted like you could have done it no problem. Is that fair? Okay. Like, I don't want to say something that's not accurate, but I just get the feeling that, um, their expectations were so high that few people would be able to reach that expectation. I'm not just talking about you, I'm talking about anybody. Yeah. Um, and it started at a young age. Yeah. It didn't start just when you went to university. No. It's been an expectation yeah. uh, that um, uh, since you were a child that you would be successful. Yeah. Uh, better than everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, in that, um, when did your uh, parents come to Canada? Not exactly. Okay, but you were born here, yeah. and your brother was born here. Okay. And where did they actually meet? You know, how they got back, together? They met back home, but they they just knew of each other back home. Okay, which back, back home means Vietnam. Vietnam. Okay. And when uh, and did they grow up in the same neighborhood or I, same town or I, something? I guess in town maybe. Yeah. Okay. Area. I guess. Okay. Okay. So, eventually, um, how did they, um, what else did you do to pretend you were in school? What kind of things would you do to try and make it look like you got your grades or? When they asked for something, I'd try to make a document for them. Okay. So what type of documents did you? Um, student loan. Okay. Okay, and how did you do them? Using the Photoshop. Photoshop, okay. And uh, what did they say when they saw the, the report cards? Did they ever question it? Not at first. No. Okay. Up until, how did they actually figure it out? When, I know they figured out you weren't living with your friend. Um, do they still, at this point, even know that you don't have any university? Yes, my father Okay, when did he find out? Uh, after I told the police. Okay, so up until this event... They just thought that I didn't go to school this full time. Okay, but they still thought you had some, some credits. Help. Okay. Um, how did it feel having to lie to them all those years? It's really hard. It's really hard, like I wanted to tell them, but... They always look down and disappointment. Okay. And I'm sure there were days when you actually planned that this is the day I'm going to tell them and then yeah. you just couldn't spit it out. Okay. All right. Um, now, well, if your parents had let you, would you still be with Daniel? If they didn't interfere, what would ha what would have happened? 
sure if I would. Maybe I'd still be with him. I'm not sure. Okay. You never know. Alright, yeah. So, we can't say because we don't know for sure. I can say we could be friends, but I don't know any more than that. Okay. And do you want more than that? I'm not sure I do right now. Okay. Alright. Um, since the time you come home, have you wanted to... You still went and saw him, so obviously you were trying to keep something going? Yeah. Okay. Um, at what point did he move on? Maybe February of last year. Okay. Of uh, 09 or February of 2010, of this year? 2010. 2010, okay. And how, how did he move on? One of his old uh, friends, he girlfriend. Okay, and who is that? Christine. And how does that make you feel? I knew that we weren't together, so. Okay. But it made me feel that I wasn't good enough to be waited. To wait, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what was your kind of plan then? Go back to school and? Get my degree, make something of my life for my parents. And yep. then once I make my life, then see where we would go. Okay. Um, so it was upsetting that he didn't wait till that played out. Yeah. Okay. Depressing for you. For me. Yeah. Okay. What about him? He still came back and said that you know I love you and if cer the circumstances were different, but it's not. Okay. Um, did you ever plan a future together? Mm, we discussed it, but. Okay. Like marriage. Some days he'd say yes, some days he'd say no. Okay. So you brought it up? he bring it up sometimes. Okay. So ultimately, because you went out for so long, they could have ended up in marriage. Still could someday, I'm not saying. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Um, on a fairness scale, where would you put the this? Did you feel it was a fair decision? At, at 24, you have to stay at home with a curfew of 9 o'clock. I knew I messed up. Okay. I knew I messed up. Okay. And that I needed to put my life back in action. Okay. Do you think it had to be that strict, though? Well, considering my past, I, I thought it was a little strict, but I, I understood. Okay. Over the years, what other things have you had to hide from your parents? Well, just besides having boyfriends and um, not going to school. Okay. Did you have a different boyfriend at one point then? Uh, well, I dated Adrian for about four months in high school. So okay. That wasn't. They didn't know about it. It wasn't much. It wasn't dating. It, it was, was high just, school. Uh, dating. Yeah, it was just I'll see you in class and that's okay. it. Okay. And what grade were you in at that time? Um, eleven. Okay. Um, what have your friends said about all this? Well, they don't know about the whole school thing. They just know I'm going back to school. Okay. Who else knows that you never went to school, though? Topaz. Yeah. She, she... Oh, yeah, she kind of knew. She, she thought I was staying with uh, Daniel. So. Oh, okay. She, that was the cover, but she thought you were still going to school. Yeah. Okay, so she didn't know the whole story. No. But she knew she was your cover. Yeah. For, she just thought it was so that they wouldn't know where you were staying. Yeah. Okay. Um, did anybody else know that you weren't going to school? Who 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 would know that? I didn't tell them. Daniel. Yeah. Anybody else? Um. No. Did his parents know? No. No. Okay, so just you and Daniel. Yeah. Okay. Um. What other things have you, in your depression, had to lie about over the last year? Just going to see him that I was still talking to Daniel, and that uh, I'd try to find ways to communicate with him. Okay. And how did you end up eventually communicating? I uh, through cell phone. Okay. How did that work? 
I text him and he texted me back whenever he could and yep. just delete them when I got them. Okay. Now, how did your uh, parents monitor this cell phone? When I was around them, they didn't like me on it. Okay, so what would they say? Mm -hmm. Who is that? What is it? Why is it so important? Okay. And they ended up taking it for a couple of weeks. When was that? Uh, when I first got like what a year and a half ago. Okay. Since then, how many times have they taken it away from you? I can't count. More than? Five. More than five? Okay. And what were the occasions that resulted in them taking it away from you? Like on the phone too much, or they thought it was Daniel, or that they thought it was a distraction. Okay, so where would you be trying to make these calls from? Where would you be in the house? In the basement, like if I had to go get something in the basement, or if I was in the washroom. Okay, so they would actually watch you every second almost? Well, not every second, but they knew where about there was all the time. And if they heard you talking? Yeah. Now, did they ever barge into the room and take the phone off you? No. No. Okay. Um, so, a lot of times, I guess you were trying to text so they wouldn't know? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, how did they find out you were talking to Daniel then? Um, they just assumed that I still do, oh yeah. Okay. Was there an occasion where you said they checked the phone? Or? Oh, I told you I deleted the call history and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and did they ever find it before you got it deleted? No. No, okay. Now, did they ever take the phone, but you had another phone? Yes. Okay, so how did that work? He got me another phone, and I just, whenever I wanted to talk to him, I plug in the SIM card. Um, but I kept the SIM card out of the phone in case they found the phone. Yeah. And that there was no card in it to use. Okay. So did they know you had more than one phone? No. No. Now, how many phones did you end up having? Just the two. And which for what? Uh, the Bell line that he had, that Daniel bought for me. Yep. And then my own Rogers. Okay, so your Rogers line, uh, what's the number on it again? Uh, 647-965-2118. And then the one he gave you? I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't give it out, so I don't remember. I'll remember like 519 with the Middle three numbers. Okay. Uh, it's a bell yeah. bell number. And he gave it. Um, so you can plug that SIM card into any phone and it'll work? Yeah. So you could even put it in your, is it a Samsung phone you had? Yes. Yeah, uh, it didn't work in my Samsung. It had to be the I an iPhone. Okay. And so where did you get the iPhone then? Uh, Daniel. Okay. He got it for me. And my brother, he has one. Okay. Um, we got uh, two of them, and we had to put, fix around, and the internet didn't work on the one I had. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned you were looking to get a new phone? Yes. Yeah. What were you trying to get? My contract was ending, so I was thinking of looking into buying uh, another phone. The uh, Fido plans were good, but I didn't like the Fido phone. Okay. So I was planning on, I got the SIM card. I didn't activate it yet because I wanted to wait for my Rogers plan to be over. Um, and then I was going to go to Fido and then go to Pacific Mall and buy a phone that I liked. Okay. How much would a phone be? 800. Yeah. Like the, the new ones. Are what, like were, what kind of phone were you hoping to get? iPhone 4. Oh, okay. Or the, the new Blackberry. The, the latest, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you actually had a Blackberry at one point, though? Uh, my brother, yeah. He gave me one of his friend's old ones. Okay. But it didn't, again, no internet, no nothing. So. You need that internet, eh? Well, it wasn't that I needed it, it was just convenient. You'd like it? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, did they ever take an iPhone off of you? Did they ever find it, or did they just always take your Samsung phone? Yeah, they always take my Samsung phone. Okay. So right now, you actually have a third chip, then, you're saying? Yeah, I just bought it, uh, but I hadn't activated it yet. Or okay, and that was with who? Fido. And what's the number for that one? There is none. Uh, it's just, I just bought the box. Oh, the box. Yeah. Okay, SIM card only. Yeah. Okay, and what kind of phone can it go into? It, it came with a, like I bought a $50 phone. So when I activated it, it would work. Okay. And, and I don't know the model, it's just a basic 
Where is that phone now then? Um, it was at home when my brother just brought it for me. But I'm not using it because I... Oh, he, he ended up buying it for no, you? No, he bought he brought it. And it was at my, it was still at my house. And uh, oh, okay. he just recently, yesterday, he just brought it home. Okay, so he's been back to the house. Have you been back to the house since? I can't. I can't even go near that. Okay. All right. And where are you staying now then? At my uncle and aunt's house. Okay. And how's that going? It's okay. Okay. Um, now, when's the last time you spoke to your dad? I saw him at the hospital Saturday. Okay. And, and he called me uh, this morning just to see if my brother had made it into school. Okay. okay. And what have you and your father discussed about this case? He just asked me if Daniel was behind it. Okay. And I told him I don't know 100%, but I don't think he did. Okay. Why would he ask that? Because he believes that we still talk and that he would go to anyone to be with me. Okay. Now what do you think about that? I know that he's moved on, so I don't think he would, he would go to these lengths to be with me when he's already moved on. Okay. Um, What else did you discuss about the case? About what happened that night? I, I haven't spoken to him about it. Nothing about what went on? Any details? No, all he said was that was it Daniel. Okay. And you told him you don't think so? I don't think so, but... Is it possible? I don't think he knows anyone, I don't think he did it, but I can't say 100% sure. So you can't say no, you can't say for sure not, is that what you're saying? Uh, has he told you that he did it? Who? Has Daniel told you that he's done it? No. Or had anything to do with it? No? No. Okay. Now, um, who else have you discussed the case with? Well, because the officers and my social worker, I haven't spoken any details to anybody. Okay. What about relatives? I, yeah. My uncle did ask me if he confronted me about something about having a black friend, but I, I didn't know what he was talking about. Okay. Uh, do you have any black friends? No, but when he said that the police officers had a photo of me talking with a friend, uh, it wasn't, he's not really a friend, he was more of a friend of mine's roommate. Okay. So I didn't, like, he's not a friend of mine, but, um, yeah, I, I did, I did meet up with him once or twice. Okay. Okay, and who is that? Um, my friend Andrew, one of his old roommates. Okay. I only know him by Rick. Rick? Okay. And where did you meet him? Um, the first time he met me near my piano school. Okay. Um, just said, uh, we just met up and my friend Andrew was like, he was, he was on the phone. And he was like, yeah, that's my friend. Um, he, my friend was busy working with his father and they were having some rent problems. So uh, they asked me if I could help them out with their rent. Okay, so what happened? So I met up with him a little later at Asian Court, just chatted a bit, and then uh, I lent him the money. Okay, so how much money did you lend him? Uh, I don't remember, like about 1100 1100 Okay. And this is, you gave it to this Rick guy? Yeah. Okay. And he was introduced to you through Andrew? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what's Andrew's last name? Montemayor. Okay, is that one of the friends you talk to all the time? Mm, I don't talk to him a lot, but okay. occasionally we go through like maybe a week or two of talking a lot and then we drift apart for a couple months. Okay. And How do you spell his last name? Montemayor? Montemayor. I, I forget. Okay. What's his phone number? Uh, Six 
647 start. Is that the, uh, Andrew, you were talking to the night? Um, yeah. Uh, before Briefly. you talked to the other gentleman? Before Edward? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so now, Rick, um, you met him where? At Agent Court? Yeah. And what? Uh, it was uh, Kennedy and Shepard. Kennedy and Shepard, and yeah. what, what type of place did you meet him at? Like, I met him, we went for coffee, yeah. then we walked around, and then we went to the library, because Andrew wanted to meet me and uh, see, see the place, because we hadn't seen each other in a while. Okay, see what place? I uh, see my house, so like, come visit me. Okay, and so you came back to your house? No, uh, so I gave Rick the address, so that uh, he can go home and give it to Andrew. And I showed him how to commute, because he doesn't drive, but I showed him how to commute up to myself. Uh, so you took Rick up to your place? No. no, no. You just told him where it was? Yeah. And he was to tell Andrew? Yeah. Who then could come and visit you sometime? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so what, uh, what was the building that you met uh, for coffee at? What was the coffee shop? That's important. Okay. And where was the location? Uh, Kennedy and Shepard. And when was that? I'm not sure. Spring, summer? I don't remember exactly. Okay. Um, this year? Mm. Okay. And um, second time you met him? That was the second time I met him. Where did you meet him the first time? I told you uh, near my piano school. Okay, sorry. And yeah. where, though, specifically? Um, a shepherd in Lima. And where, at another coffee shop, or what was no, that? No, it's just I just finished piano, we introduced each other, and then I had to go home. Okay. And who else was there? Nobody. Okay. And how did he know to come see you there? We how were on the phone with okay. Andrew, and Andrew was like, yeah. And where was Andrew at the time? He was in the South, I believe. Okay. And so, the first time you met him, what did you talk about? No, just hello, I'm Andrew's roommate. Hi, how are you? Okay, so he was living with Andrew at the time. Yeah. Are they still living together? I don't think so. Okay. And where were they staying? I'm not sure. Somewhere in Mississauga. Okay. And who, um, why didn't Andrew just meet you? He was doing, uh, he was in the process of doing uh, insurance stuff. Okay. Like, I think he was doing classes or seminars or something. Yeah. So he wasn't able to come out to Toronto. Okay. And what race is Andrew? Filipino. Filipino. And um, this Rick guy, him and uh, Andrew lived together for how long? I'm not sure. He just said he was a really good friend, okay. and they lived together. And so, what was the time that you met him first? Then, when was that? Maybe just a week before I met him the second time. Okay. Um, and what did you discuss then? Nothing. It was just uh, who we who he was and. Yeah and then I had to go. Okay, and so the next time you met him, how come you met him the second time? Because that's after that, Andrew was like, yeah, we're having pro public problems with rent. And okay. Yeah. And, okay, so they wanted money. They, my aunt friend Andrew wanted to see if I could, he could lend, uh, if I could lend him some money okay. to help with rent. And so you did? Yeah. And you gave the money to who? Rick. Okay. That day um, at Tim Hortons? Yeah. And what else did you discuss that day? Just what he liked doing. Like he said, he liked um, he liked Japanese manga books and Japanese manga books. They're like comic books or okay, something. Okay, yeah, that's his hobby. Yeah. What else? Like I asked him if he was working. He's like, no, I'm looking for a job. And okay. Um, I just like bought my piano stuff and that was about it. Okay. What is it that Andrew actually does? He's uh, doing some sort of like. Selling life insurance, I believe. I'm, I'm not 100%. What, what's sure. the company he's with? Uh, Did he try know. to sell you a policy yet? Or? No. <laughs> Usually they go after their friends first. Right? Yeah, but I told them right off the bat. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm not buying any. Yeah. Okay, so um, he, uh, you gave him $1,100. Where did you get the $1,100? I have a lot saved up from when I was serving. Okay. Uh, cash. 
Okay, so how much do you have saved up? Like now or? Yeah. Well, I had about just a little under a thousand saved up recently. Okay. Yeah. All right. So right now, how much do you have? A thousand, you're saying? Well, now I don't have any, right? Okay. <laughs> you took it all. Okay. So um, now, before Andrew took the money, how much did you have? So um, you gave him 1100 Has he paid that back yet? Uh, I talked to him recently. He said he's working on it. He's just working at HomeSense right now. And uh, he just moved back home, so that should decrease his rent. So he says he's working on that. Which HomeSense? I'm not sure. Okay. And where does he actually live? With his parents, I believe. Which is? <laughs> you don't know? No. Okay. Um, this Rick fella, what about him? Where does he live? I haven't. I don't know. I haven't spoken to him for a long time. Six months now. Okay. We're just more of an acquaintance. Yeah. Okay. So after you gave him the money, did they give you a receipt or anything? No. No. Okay. What was his promise to you about how he would pay you back? Well, Andrew said that he'd pay me back when he could. Okay. You didn't give any timelines? No. No. Okay. Um, okay. So... And after you talked or saw Rick, have you seen him since that day you gave him the money? Okay, have you talked to him since? Maybe a week after, but no. Okay, and what did you talk a week after? No, just asked him how he was, if the rent was okay, and yeah. what he was doing. He was like just watching some of his friends' kids or something. Okay. And where was their apartment? Somewhere in Mississauga. That's all you know. I guess they're not, are you saying they're not there anymore? Yeah, I know my Andrew's is back home. Um, okay. Do you know any other black guys? Mm, not that are very, very close with me, no. Okay. Um, who would be that you are very close to you? Well, Daniel's best friend is, uh, black. Okay. And what's his name? Carlos Finch. Carlos Finch? Mm. Okay. And, um, do you ever talk to him, or? No. Mm. Okay. How come you say they're best friends? They went to elementary school together, and they grew up together, almost okay. neighbors. They still hang out? Um, I believe so. I okay. believe so. When's the last time you saw Carlos? Years. Years? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, does Daniel still hang out with them then? Or? I believe so. When's the last time they would have been, you've seen them together? Oh, I've seen them together? I Years. Does Daniel ever talk about them? Mm, sometimes for birthdays and stuff. I feel like I went out for my birthday or his birthday or... Oh, Carlos would birthday. be there? Yeah. Okay. And so when when your last birthday was, did you go out with Carlos? Was Carlos there? Oh, me? No. No. Just no, I meant like his birthday or Carlos's birthday. Oh. Okay. Um, when Daniel's birthday comes around, do you make a point of seeing him? I try, but it doesn't always work out. Um... Okay. Um, how many, uh, so a personal black friend, do you don't have one or you do? No. Um, how about Filipino friends? Mm, well, Edward's Filipino. Okay. He's a good friend of mine. All right. Um, Andrew, like I said, we talk, but we're not really like close. We don't ever see each other. Okay. So I can never get out to see him. Okay. Uh, what about white friends? I have Adrian Tinkovich, like I said, and Gary. Okay. There are the two. Now, is Tinkovich, is that? Ukrainian. Ukrainian? European? Yeah. Okay. Do you know where he's actually from? Or? He's born here. His parents were born here, too. Oh, yeah. born here? Yeah. Oh, both? I believe so. Okay. But uh, his grandparents from the Ukraine? I believe so. He's very uh, into the Ukraine. Yeah. Culture? Yeah. Um, now, obviously we've spoken to a lot of people, right? Okay. Uh, one of your relatives said that you had mentioned that um, these guys liked you, that broke into the house. 
Why did you say that? I didn't say that. I said that I asked them why, like when they separated my parents away from me, I asked them why couldn't I be with them. And they were just like, you cooperated, just co keep cooperating. Okay, so you're saying you made that comment to a relative that they liked you though. Why? I don't. Is that what you meant or what was? I don't understand. I don't really understand. Okay. Did you feel like they liked you? No, they were. I, if you have a gun to your head, I don't think they, they like you very much. Okay, but they didn't shoot you? No. Why did they not shoot you? I'm, I don't know. When I when they took my parents away, I asked to go with them, and they're like, "Shut up." Okay. But you must have thought of this. You must be thinking. I, I still do, and I I spoke to the therapist about it. Okay. And wh why do? You, what have you come up with in your mind? Why? The only thing they they could say was they kept saying that you know I cooperated and to shut up and to cooperate. Okay. Keep cooperating. Did you feel you, like your parents didn't cooperate? I don't know. Okay. Is there something that they didn't cooperate with? They were trying. That's what I mean. Like, so really they did cooperate. When you think about it. There I was no money to be found. No. They told the truth. Dad said he had $60, right? Um, so there wasn't anything that he wasn't cooperating with. I don't know. I'm just trying to say, you were there, I'm just trying to get a feel for, did you think he wasn't cooperating? No. I yeah. thought that he was, everyone was cooperating. That's what they kept saying. No one would get hurt if he just cooperated. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where they didn't cooperate. Is there any time that you believe they didn't cooperate? I wasn't with them the entire time. I was only with them for a short period of time. Okay. But during that time that you were there, you were in the house, did you hear them not cooperating, I guess is the question. I didn't hear anything. They just kept asking where everything was, but right. did my your parents, mom couldn't remember. Okay. Did, did, you, did your parents lie to them? I don't know. That you can, from anything you heard, did they tell a lie? I don't know. Like, all I know, I don't know how much my father had. I didn't know how much. Okay. But they ultimately found your dad's wallet? I'm not sure. Okay. And your mom's purse? I, they couldn't find it after the internet and took me away. Okay. Um, but they never said, they never lied to them, I guess is what I'm getting down to, that you remember during any interaction you had. I don't understand it, no. No. Like, do you feel like they cooperated? Okay. Now, do you think there's any reason why they tied you up and didn't tie your parents up? I don't know. Does that seem odd to you? Why does it seem odd? Because I was away, um, I was pretty much separated from them the whole time. And does it make sense that they would leave a witness behind? If they were going to kill somebody? Does that make sense? I guess I no, th th Just thinking about it. Would it make sense for somebody that was going to kill somebody to leave a witness behind that could describe them? Does that make common sense for killers? It's not. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Do you think that was a mistake they made then? I don't know. They kept saying that they're running out of time and it just... It doesn't take a long time to kill someone though, does it? I know. I, I don't know. No. Okay. Uh, when you say they kept saying, who kept saying? Perpetrators. Okay. Which ones though? One of them, he kept telling me that, you know, it's taking too long. Okay. All right. How long did this thing last in your mind? I know you didn't have a watch on, but... Or I guess you did have a watch on, didn't you? No, I didn't. Um, did you look at the time at all? 
if you look at the time on your cell phone at all. Just estimating how long it went on, how in your mind, because you were there, how long did you think it lasted? I don't know. Okay. All I know is what people told me approximately. Okay, which is about what? They said it was somewhere like half an hour and 45, I don't know. Half an hour and 45. Okay. All right. Now, I have your statement here, the first one that you gave, so I just want to go over some of the information there just to make sure that I, I understand it, okay? Um, in the morning, um, your mom was going to visit your grandfather, and um, she went outside, and then there was a problem with a gas leak on the street. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. When she first went out, did you go out with her? No? Okay. When she uh, was going, were you going to go with her originally? No. You never were going to go see your grandfather? I've seen him the day before, and she said to concentrate on my studies. Okay. Just that you did go outside, so I was wondering... She, she came back in and told me. She told you to come out. Okay. Uh, because of what? Exactly. Okay. So she had gone out and then she came back to get you. Mm -hmm. And then you went out together? I, I went in to change and we left. Okay, so what did you change into then? Don't remember. Don't remember? Okay. Um, and then you went back out and they called the gas leak off. And you went back in and your mom went to see your grandfather. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Was anyone else at the house at that time? Yes, no? No. 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 Okay. And um, then you went and on to the internet um, or did some studies and you played some games on Facebook. Yeah. Is that correct? Okay. What games do you play on Facebook? Restaurant City, Fonzo, Mafia Wars. What's the last one? Mafia Wars. Okay. And are you playing against somebody or by yourself? Oh, my community. Okay. And who's in that? Any of your friends? Oh, my friend, Mark. Mark what? Fong. Mark Fong? Okay. So that morning, were you playing against him? You don't play against, like, you send each other gifts and you work on your own and you help each other. Okay. And so you uh, were working on which, all three of those games, or just one of them? I don't know all of them, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay. And how do you, when you go on, how do you get a hold of him to know, do you have to phone him ahead of time and say, let's go online, or what do you do? Like, you do your own thing, and then, you know, if you're online and the other person's online, you can just... Mrs. Hey, can you send me this gift or that gift? Okay. And so is that what you did that day? You were in communication with him? I think. I don't remember anymore. Okay. All right. Okay. Then um, you played some piano. How long would you play piano for? Half an hour to an hour. Okay. And what do you actually do? Are you practicing? Or are you going over stuff you already know? Or... Are you playing for pleasure, or are you playing for... Do you know what I mean? I practice some of my older pieces. Okay. And then I do a little bit of practical for my dad, and then I do a little bit for pleasure. Okay, so it's a combination of everything. Okay. And you do that for about a half an hour. An hour. Okay. Okay, so you go through the day and eventually your mom comes back around 3.30. Did she tell you how your grandfather was doing or did you talk about that? Yeah, not because it, you know, he wasn't eating much. Okay. And what's happened with your grandfather since? 
Okay, and when did that happen? Did they help? Wow, eh? Sorry to hear that. And were you guys close, or what was your relationship like with him? That's your mother's father? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about your grandma? Is she still around or? No. no. Okay. And he was in the nursing home, I understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, when did he actually come to Canada? Do you know? With my mom. Okay, so years ago. He brought the family over? Yeah, they all refuge to Canada. Pardon me? They all refuge to Canada. Okay. And does your mom have some brothers and sisters or? Lots. Lots, okay. And did they all come over? Most of them. Okay. And do some of them live on your street or is that your dad's side? No, that's my mom's side. Okay, so how many, and that's who you're staying with now? Your aunt? Your mom's sister? My mom's brother. Brother, okay. And what's your aunt's name that you're staying with? Yuda. Yuda? Yuda. Yuda? Yuda. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, so Adrian came over. Is that right? Okay. And anything, uh, you watch some shows. Did you talk about anything? No. Like when you watch your shows, do you have uh, talk about them after, or how's the, how's the evening going with him? I just watch and then what's next? If there's a joke, we laugh. Okay. And what were you watching that night? All I remember was Gossip Girl, but then there was another show that okay. was in Boy And how many shows did you actually watch? I'm not sure. Maybe three, four, two. Okay. Yeah. And are those shows a half hour or an hour long? Some are an hour, some are half. Okay. And so the whole time he was there, did you watch TV or did you have some conversation or? Maybe TV conversation. What's that? Just talked about. TV conversation. What else did you talk about though? The TV. That's it. Never talked about anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you watch TV, do you eat? I offered him, but no. No, you had already eaten? We ate dinner. He I ate dinner. He didn't want anything? No. Okay. And from your place, how far away does he actually live? 15, 20. Okay. And where about does he live? Brimley and Okay. And the address there? Like 15 Leeswood. 15 Leeswood? Now, would, do you ever do TV night at his place? Mm -hmm. okay. And obviously, what well, what do your parents think of him? They like him. Why do they like him? Because his mom, his, uh, his mom and, and parents are good people. Okay. And um, do you, the parents know each other? They know of each other. Okay. Like, do they go to the same church or anything like that, or? Same social events or anything? No. Okay. But they say they know they come from a good family. Okay. Um, now you went up to once he left. What did you do after he left? Went to my room. Okay. And what did you do? Watch TV. I was on the phone with Andrew. Okay. And this is the same Andrew that you lent the money to. Okay. And what did you guys talk about? How he's doing his girlfriend. Okay. And how is he doing? Like, uh, he said that he's now working at Home Sense. He moved back home and put a strain on the relationship, but they work together. The, uh, she works at Home Sense? No, she works at the insurance company that he works for as well. Okay. So has he got two jobs? I guess. Like, I know the insurance thing is just whenever it is, so the other ones are more. Okay. 
And what else did he talk about? Not much else. Um, and did he phone you or did you phone him? Mm -hmm. What would the usual thing be? Sometimes one of us contacts one, sometimes the other one contacts the other. Okay. But you're, you're verbally talking on the phone? Yes. Okay. And how long did that go on for? Not long. I don't remember the call time. About? Maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and then what happened? I hung up, and then I called Ed. Okay. So you did call Ed, and then what did you guys talk about? Watching TV, how his work day was. Now, is this a routine for you to phone out in the evening to people, or? Okay. Um, do your parents mind you calling people, or? Yes, what? so I whisper. Okay. Um, so it's not just Daniel they don't want you talking to, it's they don't want you on the phone at all, or? Yeah, not late night. Not late night, it's okay. But was that considered late, or what? Yes. What's late for them? Nine, ten. Okay. And, because your dad actually goes to bed fairly early? I think so, I don't remember when he actually... No, in general? Yeah. Okay. Because he works early. And, yeah, what time does he get up in the morning usually? Like five. Okay. Uh, and your mom, do your mom and dad sleep in the same room or do they sleep apart? Sometimes they sleep together, but lately she's been sleeping in my brother's room. Okay, which is? Across the way. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so the one across from your room. Okay. How long has she been doing that for? Two years. Okay, so it's more than lately then? Okay, so for two years she's been sleeping across the hall. Any particular reason or? Okay. Now, what's her normal turn-in time? It depends. Um, normally like midnight. Okay, so she stays up later than everybody. Or maybe you stay up late too. I don't know. What, what's your usual turn-in time? Like turn-in around nine. Okay. Turn-in. You go to your room, but yeah. how long do you usually stay up watching TV and trying to talk on the phone? Two in the morning. Okay, so it can get obsessive. <laughs> okay. Um, so is your dad a sound sleeper then? Sometimes, yeah. Because he's upstairs during those times, but your mom's. Um, does she, before, when she stays up to midnight, what does she do? Watch Chinese television. Okay. Her feet. And where does she do that from? Living room. Okay. How does it make you feel that they don't get along very well? What does that do to you? I have to be mediated. Okay. And when you mediate, what do you got to do? Find a common ground. Okay. And what's kind of the common ground that you usually go to? Get my life back in order. So you try to be, if you can be good for them, it'll help them? Is that your position? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what's their typical fight about? My dad being loud and noisy and inconsiderate. My mom being naggy. My dad not doing enough housework and caring enough about the house as opposed to other people's houses. Okay. What do you mean other people's houses? Just like uh, he has all these ideas for other people's houses that he doesn't think and do our house, like decorating and upgrading them. Okay. But when he talks about his friend's houses, he has a lot of ideas. Okay. But he doesn't apply them to... Okay. And how does that make your mom feel then? That he doesn't care about this house, the family. Okay. How does that make you feel? I know that that's just my dad. Okay. How long has this been going on, the tension? As long as I can remember. It's always been there. Did your brother ever have to mediate? Okay. That year when I moved out, 
Well, not moved up, but the year I stayed away from home. Yeah. He, he took a lot of it. And he was at home at the time? This is last year of high school. Okay. All right. And then when he left, you were on your own again. Okay. What do you and your brother discuss about that? How, does, how do you feel about it? We divide and conquer. Like I try to go and comfort my mom, help my mom off with stuff, and he goes to my dad calming him down and talking to him about one of his interests. Okay. So separate them, essentially. Okay. Um, the arguments, How? what do they do during the arguments? Yell bigger. Okay. And when you hear the yelling, what does that do to you? It tells me I need to go to where they are to help them calm down. Okay. All right. Um, and how often do they actually get in one of these loud fights? Every day. Almost every day. Okay. Um, and what was the last fight that they had? Well, my father came home late that day. Okay. And they had an argument about that? And how did that go? My mom just left for dance. Okay. My um, dad left first and then started. He left after he came home from work, and then he called him. My uncle left, and then by the time my dad got home and ate dinner, my mom had to leave. Okay. Um, so they didn't have the time to... But originally, there was a fight that night? Yeah. Okay. And what did your mom say to your dad? She said, where did you go until that time? And she didn't believe that he just forgot to lock his something at work. Did it sound unreasonable to you, or...? I don't know. If he forgot something at work, then he forgot something at work. But usually, why she was yelling, because he doesn't turn on his phone, or he doesn't let us know. So we okay. Just... She didn't think it was considerate, I guess, is what it, the argument really was about. Not so much that you were late, but you didn't call about it. Is that more...? <laughs> yeah. If I'm wrong, tell me, but I'm just... I think so, yeah. Okay. And, um... But he was, what, a half an hour late compared to usual? 40 minutes, yeah. 40 minutes, okay. What did she think he was doing in those 40 minutes? She never said. Did she believe that his story or not? She didn't really say. Okay. Now, was she more upset that he was late or that he just didn't call? He has a phone and he never uses it. Okay. Um, the supper, is it usually made for a certain time every night? Which is what time? Oh, high five, sir. So he'd have been home in time for that, though? Yeah. yeah okay. Right. Now, um, when you went up to your room to get ready for bed, what does that entail? Brush my teeth, go to my room. Okay. And, um, what do you wear to bed? Do you wear pajamas? Sometimes, not all the time. Okay, what what would make you wear them or what would make you not wear them? Laundry or how lazy I am or how comfortable my regular clothes are. Okay. Did you actually change your clothes that night? Uh, I put on a sweater because it was cold. Okay, which was what? A skating sweater, I believe. Okay. Um, and what did you have for bottoms? So did you actually change in out of them, or had how long had you had those on? I don't remember. I'm sorry, I don't remember. When would have you put them on that day? Maybe in the morning, like when my mom asked me to go with her. Okay. I think um, um, underneath the skating shirt, what did you have on? I don't think I had anything on him. I don't think. So you had to take something off 
That's why I'm just getting to, if you put that on, did you take anything off? My bra. Okay. And okay. Maybe a pink top. Because or... you obviously weren't walking around with just your bra all day. Is that fair? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't remember yeah, just, the details. Yeah, take your time. I just don't remember. Okay. It was a t-shirt or something. Yeah, okay. Um, and what you put on the... Exactly. You remember that, okay. And then what happened? Somewhere. You were essentially then um, on the phone. Just watching, I think, just watching TV and talking to Ed on the phone. Okay. How did the conversation end with Ed? I heard my father, my mother calling for my father. Okay. And then what? I have to go through this again. Okay. At, um, when you went to bed, was your mom home yet? She had just gotten home and I went down. I told Ed, I'll be right back. And I I went down, I said hi to her, and, and I went back up to my room. Okay. So what time would have that been, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at? 9.15. Okay. So she got home, you went down. How long did you... When she came home, she changed. Yeah. And then did you that's see? when I know she came home, when she went up to change. And then she went back downstairs and... I went down to say hi, grab a glass of water, I believe, and went back up to my room. Okay. And then you were back on the phone with Ed. Okay. When you heard what? I won't call you, my dad. Okay. So, when you went down to see your mom, what did you talk about? Mom, I needed to say hi. She was watching her tiny show, I just left her alone. Okay. And what else did you do while you were downstairs? Let's go get a glass of water and then went back up the stairs. Okay. And where did you get the glass of water from? Okay. Um, now, while you're downstairs, at any time, do you make sure that the house is secure? That's usually the person who goes to bed last. Okay. Uh, just in our house, any time anybody's going to bed, they usually, each one of us, <laughs> end up doing it in case somebody else forgets. So did you uh, check the front door at all? No. 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 No? Back door, side doors? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you were the one to go to bed last, what doors would you check? Back door and front doors. Okay. And what would you do? Make sure that they're locked. Okay. And if they weren't locked? Lock them. Lock them. Okay. Um, and the back door, how do you guys secure that? lock and then just pull and close. Okay. Is that a slider? Yeah. Do you guys put a piece of wood in there at no. all? Or? No. So you just make sure it's locked? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so who would be the person that mostly does that then? My mother. Okay. Um, is it typical that if she's coming in late that she would lock it? Mm -hmm. You know, meaning if it's already dark outside, would she lock the door as soon as she comes in? You know, as opposed to being in the middle of the day and you just... I think I'm pretty sure I don't... I'm not 100% sure. Like, let's just say you came in and it was already dark outside. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Well, I'd lock the door behind me. Yeah. Because you don't intend on going out again. It's just common, common practice. Okay. All right. Were you injured at all during the whole process? Not really. Okay. Not really anything? No. Okay. When they tied your hands, what kind of uh, style did they tie them? I'm not sure. I'm not. Okay. And when they tied you to the banister, how did they do that? How did, uh, how did they tie? I don't know. They maybe kept looking down. Okay. Let me look. Yeah. Well, what could you feel? 
that was a tight and then like another tight. Where did it feel tight? In my, in my upper arm. Okay. So what was around your upper arm? Black face. Okay. And what was around, how else were you tied? On my wrist. Okay. And were your wrists tied to the banister? No. How do you know? Because I tied my wrist first and then I tied my arm to the banister. Okay. Now, um, you mentioned um, on the tape that you were getting loose. What did you mean by that? The, the upper, my upper arm was falling. The, the, the string was falling. Okay, where did it fall to? The short distance, I think. Okay, and how did you get it to do that? I don't remember. I was just wiggling and trying to get Okay. Um, and where did that string end up when the police got there? They cut it up. Okay. What's that? I don't want to go through this. Okay. Well, de details are important because it, it shows us what, uh, what they did, right? And we need, we need to get that. Um, the one thing I do want to go over is the description of the gentleman that you said, you called him number one. Can you tell me that again? The first person that uh, you dealt with or that... Can you help me with that? You're going to have to speak up, I can't hear you. Slightly shorter than, sorry? Just slightly shorter than you. Yep. Which is what? Maybe 5'6". Yep. What kind of build? Medium build. Okay. And what type of face? Round face. Okay. And... Age? Okay. And then there was a another gentleman that you called number two previously. Yeah. What would how would you describe him? Okay. Was his face covered the whole time? With what? Okay. Cloth. Okay. And. Okay, I appreciate that. And the third person. I did see them very well. Okay, well, you did see some of them. How do you know it was Caribbean? It sounded like from what I hear on TV and people around. Okay. What about um, voices for the other two? Number one. No accent. And what about the, neither of them had an accent or? When he did speak, okay. And what were those syllables? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what else did you hear from him? I don't remember. Okay. All right. Um, do you need anything to drink at all? Okay. You realize that it's important, though. Obviously, 
everything is so important that night that it's probably the most important night of your life. And I know it's tough to keep going over, but it's important, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna step out for a second, okay? Did you need anything? No? Okay, hold tight. I won't be long. Okay, sorry about that. All right. Um, the money that you, um, they took from you, how much was that again? Uh, 2000 of mine, and I don't believe, I heard my mom say it's like 1100 but I don't know. Okay, so prox of your own, $2,000. And what kind of denominations was that? Okay. And if you had it in a stack, how big would that stack be? Okay. And where did you keep that? In my night table underneath the TV. Okay. And how long had you kept it there? For that six months? It was in uh, my other bedside table. Okay, which is where? Not the bedside table. Why did you switch it up? Because 
that one got full. Okay, <laughs> so you moved it over. Did you have any other money in your room in any other places? A few twenties in my wallet. Okay, did they get that? I believe they did. Okay, did you give it to them? Uh, I, they pointed it at one of my purse. Okay, and what did they do with that? You saw him take it or not? Yes. Okay. And you haven't been back to check since? I can't. Okay. okay, gotcha. Now, um, and where did that money come from? Some of it I just recently withdrew, and others is from money I think of from certain. Okay. How much did you withdraw? Uh, 1500 twice, but. Uh, it was to pay back my mom for uh, recent vacation we went. Okay. So how much did you owe her? Five hundred. Okay. And when did you take that five hundred out? Just recently, the day before, I think. Okay. And the the other five hundred? Uh, Earlier on in the week. Okay. Maybe like two weeks. And where did you get that from? I'm sorry. Where did that come from? In my bank. And where's your bank? When I was, I don't remember the other withdrawal, but my one withdrawal was at, my most recent withdrawal was at Warden and Warden, and I don't remember where I withdrew the other one. Okay. Um, but you went through a teller, or did you go through a cash machine? Machine. Okay, for both, or just one? Uh, I'm pretty sure for both. Okay. And how much did you take out each time? Is that your maximum that you can take out on the machine? Okay. How much do you have in your account? Mm -hmm. Over a thousand. Okay. And where did that come from? My mom. Your mom? And when did she give it to you? She gives me these checks. Okay. She works and she puts it under my name. She works where? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's like, it's like this packaging company. Okay. And that's on the side or? Yes. Okay. And she puts it in your name and do you have to give her the money back then? Yes. Okay. She keeps a tab and okay. at the time I withdraw and I give it to her. Okay. And how come you hadn't withdrawn or how come you hadn't given it to her yet? She hadn't asked for it yet. She's like, just give it a few days and then. But she knew you withdrew it? Uh, no. She's like, I will be withdrawing soon. Okay. She didn't know you already took it out. So why would you not just give it to her then? Why would you withdraw it and not give it to her? I don't know. It's just, I'd, I'd only give it to her because I should forget to write it in her book. Okay. All right. So how often does she give you... The, she has a check made out to you. Do you put the deposit in? or? Yes. Okay. How often does she make a deposit in your account? A week. Okay. For 500 or no, what's the amount? Random, random amount. So 200, 300. Okay. And they come from a packaging company? Yes. And where's that? Gordon and 14th area. And does she report there every day or? No, just whenever they need to, they'll call her in. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Now, the reason why I'm here today, okay, is that I'm an expert, okay, in what we call truth verification, okay? I'm not a homicide detective, okay, although I work on a lot of homicides, okay? So my job in any case, and anybody that's a witness in this case, I have to speak to, okay, after they've been interviewed originally by anybody else, okay? And so what it's about is truth verification. Okay, so basically all my studies come into interviewing and uh, detecting deception, uh, determine if somebody's telling the police the truth, okay? Because every investigation that we run that's a homicide, we run a parallel investigation, okay? And when I talk about a parallel investigation, what I mean by that is obviously the detectives that are assigned to the case okay, are trying to determine who's responsible for the home invasion, who's responsible uh, for what happened there, okay? 
That's their job. Okay, my job is to determine whether everything somebody has told us as a witness or as a reporting party is actually the truth. Okay? Now, in my experience as a police officer, no matter what the case is, okay, um, for some reason or another, people make mistakes in that they don't always tell the truth. Okay? Um, they may tell some of the truth, but they don't always tell all of the truth. Do you know what I mean? Okay. And I know in your life you've already had occasions where you, you're well aware of what half-truths mean, right? What do they mean? You don't believe truth. Yeah. So when we're talking about truth, we're not just talking about a person saying something uh, that's not true, right? That's one way of not telling the truth, simply by making something up, right? Do you agree? Okay. But also withholding information is not telling the truth, okay? It's purposeful deception, really, right, okay? They're leaving stuff out that may assist the investigation, okay? That may lead uh, to the people that are responsible from being caught, right? Um, and that's where uh, we talked earlier about, um, so some people obstruct the investigation, okay? Because they, they provide facts that are totally not true, okay? Other things they tell about the case obviously did happen. So what we talk about is a combination of people telling things that are totally not true, leaving information out would be two ways that people uh, haven't been truthful. Okay. So how do I make my conclusions? Okay. So some of the ways is obviously I count on my experience, right? I talk to thousands of people, okay? And I basically know when somebody's not being straightforward with me, okay? I can tell by the language they use, how they answer the questions, their body language, how they treat the question, that something's wrong here, okay? This doesn't make sense, okay? The other thing is something, an understanding of what common sense is, okay? Could this have happened that way? By what the person is telling me, could have it even happened like that? Okay, is it realistic? Is it plausible? Okay, so basically we're trained in statement analysis. Okay, so what I did with your statement is I wrote it all out, every word that you said. Okay, just like everybody else that gave a statement, every noun, pronoun, verb, everything. Okay, and people are trained to speak in a certain language. Okay. And when they are not being truthful, that shows up in their language. They don't even know they're doing it, okay? But when we analyze the statement itself, we know whether they're being truthful or not truthful, okay? And these days, we even have software that assists us in that, okay? We're in the modern ages, right? Okay, so we have uh, computer programs. And one of the ones that we utilize in these cases is an analysis program called event probability analysis, okay? And what we do is we feed everything into the computer. Basically, the computer, I type it out, and we feed it in, and it takes, you scan it in, actually, and it takes a copy of everything that's been said. And it analyzes um, what a person has said, okay? And based on what they say, it will tell us where the areas of deception are, okay? when something's missing uh, that they're not telling us, okay, areas of concern and uh, areas that are flat out not truthful, okay, and areas that they you come back with a result that says not plausible, okay, because what it is is this software analyzes, it's being entered by all police forces, okay, so it has data from thousands of cases, right, so if it gets information that's totally never happened before in any other case, right, that tells you something, right? Because human beings, there's only so many ways to do something, okay? And people follow patterns, okay? And when things go outside of a normal pattern, that's a red flag, right? Do you agree? When, th when, th when things don't add up. So that, that's another um, thing that we look into. Of course, I have to go over all the forensics of a case, okay, because that's evidence, okay, 
And you're already aware of how many days the police were at your house, right? About that. About that? About that. Yeah. Days on, on days on days. And when they were there, okay, they're not just there uh, taking a couple pictures or anything, okay? They're going over that house with a fine tooth comb, okay? They're going over every hair fiber, every skin cell, every bit of blood, because Essentially, you know what DNA is, right? Okay. Basically, a person cannot go in or out of a, anywhere without leaving a part of themselves behind, right? You understand that? Do you watch CSI at all? A little bit. A little bit. But you're, it tells you that it would be like if you and I walked out of this room right now, right? And we brought in our uh, forensics experts, right? And what they would do is they would collect any hair, any fibers, uh, any skin cells, any DNA that was in this room, okay? And what they could do with that is simply say, at the end of the day, they would say, you know what? Jennifer Pan was in that room and Bill Gates was in that room, okay? It's conclusive that um, we can't go in and out without leaving parts of ourselves behind. You understand that, right? Okay. So obviously the forensic in this case uh, will tell us a lot of information, okay? Who was in what room? Who wasn't in what room, okay? What you have to remember is what is there and what is not there are just as important, okay? So if somebody was said to be in a certain room and our experts went through there and there were no fibers from that person, what would that tell you? Yeah, they weren't there, okay? Um, so in my work, I'm looking for what's there, but also what's not there is just as important. And you know what? A lot of times it's even more important, okay? Because it goes to verifying what the person, what the witnesses have told me, okay? Or what they haven't told me, both, right? Okay, so that's, that, that's another thing that, uh, of course, that's uh, done at every scene, okay? The other thing that we do is obviously we talk to a lot of people and you already know we've done that because we've talked to a lot of your friends and people that you know, right? So you're well aware that we don't leave any rock unturned, okay? And so go, we go out and do that. Uh, you already know um, that we've contacted these people because that's part of what we do in every investigation, okay? Every interview is important. Every person that may have any knowledge at all is important. Right. We also talk to people that have talked to the witnesses, okay? So if we've interviewed you, for instance, and then we go and interview that person that's talked to you, they will tell us what you said, okay? And if there's odd things in what you've told them or they don't make sense, of course, we find that out because they tell us, right? And so that's another way we can determine if somebody's being truthful. They tell someone else something different than what they've told uh, us ourselves or something that's in conflict with that, right? Uh, so that's another thing that we do. Um, the other thing we do is we have to reach out to what we call modern technology, okay? So there's some of the things that we utilize as satellite, okay? Now, are you, do you know what satellite can do? Okay, do you watch any of these uh, when uh, these war programs on TV where they do bombings and stuff. Have you ever seen any of that? Or when uh, the Iraq war was on? Have you ever see any of the news clips where you can see the satellite honing in on buildings? Okay. So we can go back and obtain satellite information. Okay. And essentially the satellite's a 24-hour video that's going on, uh, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? It's recording information, okay? And that's how the military uses it in, you know, for precision bombing and everything else because they're able to find out where bombs are inside buildings and hone in on that through satellites and heat-seeking uh, uh, apparatuses that tell you what's going on inside, right? Okay? So we're able to go back uh, and review that, okay? And so we would have to obtain uh, that data for a specific address, uh, get it for the dates and time that we're concerned with, okay? And basically, if people are moving around in a house, 
um, it's like an x-ray, okay? And basically we're able to tell, you know, are those movements, are those actions, that number of people consistent with the story that we've been told? Um, are the people in the positions that the witnesses are telling us they were in? Uh, or are they different? Okay, and if they're different, why are they different is what, what our question becomes, right? So that's, a, that's another uh, thing that we do. Obviously, just to go back to forensics for a minute, what we're doing is stuff like, um, in this case, that doorknob is very important, that door lock, okay? And so we're looking for who was the last one that actually uh, touched that doorknob, our door lock, right? Okay. Um, did somebody lock it last or did somebody uh, unlock it? Okay, so we would see, uh, you would get like fingerprints of one person locking and then overlap by the person that unlocked it, that type of thing. Um, and um, again, it would just be information that would go to determine what happened on in that house, right? And uh, from there. The other thing, of course, um, in any case, you know about Crime Stoppers, right? Have you heard of Crime Stoppers before? Yeah, you call them. Yeah, okay. When you get a case like this, okay, people want to help, okay? It's in the papers, it's everywhere, okay? So people actually end up coming to us to help us out with the case, okay? Now, in a case like this, we're actually very fortunate because the more people that are involved in a crime, the more information we always get, okay? If a person goes out and commits a crime themselves, who knows about it? Just themselves, for sure, and maybe anybody they tell, right? In a case where they actually is uh, multiple people involved, so in this case, three people inside the house and a number of other people involved on the peripheral, right? Um, each of them knows. Okay, so now we're getting into a higher number of people knowing what happened. And you know what? Somebody always tells somebody else. Okay? And so that doubles the number of people that know. Okay? And then over drinks and everything else, that person tells another person. And before we know it, a ton of people actually know what happened that night. Okay? And suddenly we get people calling in because what? You know why? They want to help. Okay? There's other people that just want the money. They know what happened, they've heard about it, they've heard it through a friend, okay? In all the years that I've been policing, you don't know how many people actually call in on their own friends. It happens all the time, okay? Because they want that money, okay? They get greedy. So we get calls all the time from people uh, that are involved. We also get people that are actually involved in the crime telling about other people that were involved in the crime. And they're actually going to collect money on a case that they were involved in. Does that make, you hear what I'm saying? Okay. And, and so at the end of the day, okay, there's so many resources available to me um, that at the end of the day, I'm going to know if a person's telling me the truth or not, okay? Whether they, and it may not be to me because I'm analyzing also every statement they made to the police, okay? And the other things that we do is obviously we get uh, forensic sciences and profiling people involved to determine the events of these things, okay? Now, I can tell you that nothing surprises me in this job, okay? I am well aware that anybody on this earth is capable of making a mistake, okay? I don't care who they are. I don't care um, if they're a priest. I don't care if they're a school teacher. I don't care what the situation is. Given a certain set of circumstances, Everyone has the capability, Jennifer, of making a mistake, doing the wrong thing, okay? Um, the key, though, when I talk to people is when they made a mistake, okay, that's one thing, right? The key is to not keep making the same mistake, okay? 
and to get that information out and get it off your chest. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Okay? So, at the end of the day, from this case, and I can tell you I've spent literally a week on this case, going over information after information, accessing all these sources, speaking to every other expert on the case. Okay? And at this point, Jennifer, I know that you've not been truthful with the police. Okay? You've not told us everything that you know, purposely. Okay? And that you've left information out. Okay? There's a number of inconsistencies in what you've told the police, okay? One of the things you have to remember is that your dad was there, okay? And your dad had a front row seat to all of this, okay? And your dad's a very smart man, okay? And he has a very clear perception of what's going on. And he tells a very truthful story, because I've gone through this whole process with him. Okay, I've had to do the same thing. And I know he's being truthful. Okay? The problem is that your story, what you're telling, is not truthful. Okay? And we have to clear this up. Okay? Your rendition of what happened, one, a lot of events you say that happened never did, okay? A lot of things that you told the police happened never happened, okay? They never happened in the sequence that you've told, okay? You've got to remember that your dad was there, okay? That's just one part of it. There's lots of other things that tell me that you've not been truthful, all this analysis that I've been doing. But on top of it, that yours doesn't match at all, except for very few factors that you, you've told the truth, but you haven't told all the truth. We're getting into where, you know, you've spent a considerable amount of time in the last seven years telling half-truths, okay? And I can understand why, okay? You've had a tough life, okay? What's happened to you, to me, equates to abuse, okay? And all the stresses that you've had and forced to lie, I can understand why you did it, okay? But you're in another situation here where you're under another tremendous amount of stress, okay? And that stress is brought on by those same factors that brought on stress before, okay? The number one thing that brings on stress to you is when you're not truthful, right? That hurts you, right? Okay? And it doesn't feel good inside, does it? It breaks down the person that you are. Because at the end of the day, you're a good person. I know that. You've got a good heart. Okay? In this case, though, you've made mistakes. Okay? And you're involved in this. I know that. Okay? There's no question about it. Okay? The only question right now is, are you going to keep making mistakes? Are you going to go on the route that you've gone on over the years and try to pretend that things happen that never happened, okay? Are you going to not face reality here, okay? You were not truthful to the police in this case. We know that you're involved. We've done our homework, okay? We have to resolve that now here today, okay? I need to know from you what really happened, okay? And I mean, who else is involved in this, okay? Because there's no doubt, Jennifer, that you are. Okay, we know that. We're past that. Okay? There's no question about it at all. Okay? And I know why this has happened. Okay? You have spent your whole life trying to live up to expectations that you can't meet. Okay? And it's stressed the hell out of you. You're a 24-year-old woman being treated like a 15-year-old. Okay? What? You've never done anything that terrible in your life, but you're being treated like you have. You're not being treated like the adult that you are. Yes, you made some mistakes, big deal. You're not the first person that has gone out and not told their parents that they're dating a guy because in your culture they don't accept it. I understand that. I've talked to people in here that have kept that secret for their whole life. 
from their parents. Okay, so that's not abnormal, but that puts a lot of stress on you, right? That's not easy for you, is it? No. Now, what we need to get down to here today, Jen, is what really happened. You need to tell me what went on. Because you know who was in that house that night. You, you do, Jen. There's no question about that, okay? There's no question about it, okay? You have actually given an improper description of the person you were dealing with upstairs. Number one, you falsified the whole description of that person. We know that, okay? We know that, okay? He, yes, you did, Jen, okay? You did. You've made a, a mistake here, and we've got to get to the bottom of that. That person did not exist in that house that night. I know that. Okay, we've done our homework. Okay, you heard on the news that there was video, right? Okay. It wasn't three black guys that left that house. You know that and I know that. Okay. So we need to get down to why you have purposely told us a false description of number one. Okay. No, Jen. It's totally wrong, and it was done on purpose, okay, to mislead us, okay, because you're involved in this, okay. You cannot deny that, okay. You cannot deny that. We know now, okay. So let's just get it out on the table. You've made a mistake. I know that, okay. But you can't live with this any longer than this. Your, your, your buddy nervous wreck over this thing. This thing... If you could take it back, I know that you would. If you could go back to that day and play this all over again, it would be different, okay? But you need to right now know that we know that you're involved. There's no question about that. None whatsoever, okay? But what we also know is that you're a good person, okay? That's made a mistake here, right? You've, you've made some bad decisions, okay? And it's, you know, how you made the bad decisions that not talking, telling your parents what's up. You don't want to do that with us. Okay, you don't want to do that with the police, do you? Yeah, but... You don't want to mislead me, do you? No. Okay, so let's not do that. You made a mistake that night. You got involved with the wrong people, okay? You got involved in the wrong set of circumstances, okay? But that's over with now. We're past that. Okay, we know that that happened, okay, but you know what, in all my years of policing, it doesn't matter what goes wrong with people, it's never too late to do the right thing. You know that, and I know that, okay, and what you can do here today is actually do the right thing, okay, you have to do the right thing, okay, you can't go around continuing this, okay. Remember when you said what it did to you when you went through those years of depression? That was brought on by not being truthful. Living a lie. You don't want to keep living this lie. Okay? Everybody knows. Okay? You know, and you're getting the feeling from everybody around you that they know. Okay? Nobody is surprised. Okay? There's nobody surprised here. Okay? After what you've been through, I'm surprised this didn't happen a lot earlier, truthfully. Okay, you're 24 years old, and you were a prisoner in your own house. You had lost your own identity. There was no Jennifer anymore, okay? You were living for what somebody else wanted. You weren't you. You were what somebody else wanted. You were living someone else's expectations, okay? And yes, family is important, but when family takes over you as a human being, when they take your identity, there is no more Jen. So no matter how good their intentions are, no matter how much they love you, they're taking away Jen, okay? And you have gone through this for years in the middle of tension, tension that's got to the point that it makes you sick. Your stomach churns over it. You don't wake up a day that there's not some issue on the table not some stress in your household, okay? 
essentially you've been told to live up to expectations you yourself years ago knew that you could not do okay they're taking away Jen there is no Jen they took Jen away the Jen that just wants to be a piano teacher why isn't that good enough why was that not good enough that was great expectations why not just be a lab technician why the doctor why does it always have to be something bigger? Why can't it just be what you want? And all that has resulted in what's happened on, a, on November 8th. The tension built up to a point that, you know what? It's like an animal that gets cornered. It's, at some point, the nicest dog, when it's cornered, bites back, okay? It's called self-preservation. Okay? And in your case, all that's happened here is self-preservation. Eighteen months ago, Jen, you chose your family over Daniel. Okay? But you gave up Jen in the process. You gave up yourself to this whole thing. There was no Jen anymore. The Jen that just wanted to, to teach piano, that wasn't good enough. The Jen that just wants a normal nine-to-five job, that's not good enough. And Jen was in a state of depression, backed into a corner. And what it came down to is one thing, self-preservation. Self-preservation overrules anything in life, okay? At the end of the day, it's like your life is being choked out of you. That's what's been happening for the last seven years. And basically, the grip on your throat, on your life, has shrunk and tightened up to a point where either you do something about it or it's the end of Jen. And you've diminished to a point where the only thing you could do is fight back for once. And that's what's happened here again. We know that. We know that. And I, again, I'm surprised it took this long. A 24-year-old young woman being treated as a prisoner in her own home. I can't imagine. Like the rules that they have are for 12-year-olds, not for somebody twice that age. Yes, their intentions might have been good, but they're not realistic. They're not, Dan, were they? Again, their expectations weren't realistic, were they? You couldn't live up to them, could you? You tried to, right? Am I right? Yeah. And finally you had to bite back, right? You had no other choice. You felt like you had no other options. You thought of everything else, including killing yourself to make this change, right? Right? I'm right, aren't I, Jen? Right? It's okay. We understand. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out in the open, Jen. That's all this is about understanding. We know that you were involved. We know what you did. But you can't live like this. you got to get it off your chest. You've been so stressed out from the moment this happened. You knew that it was going to happen that night. Before it happened. And why you froze on your bed there is because reality had set in. The plan was in motion. There was no turning back. And I know right now you wish you could turn it back, right? You wish you could go back before that night and stop this, right? Right, Jen? Right? What happened?
วัฒนธรรโอเคเหตุการณ์ yes the guys came in okay but you were involved that's what the difference is here okay right a lot of what you said happened but a lot of it that you said didn't happen okay okay but that's why you're not saying that's important here you were part of setting this plan in motion right you were behind this right you have to get it off your chest and it's killing you get it off your chest and we're going to talk it out here we're going to understand and we're going to get this pressure off you because that's what you need right now do the right thing now Jim we already know you're not going to surprise me here okay I already know what the answer is and I can't let I can't stand to see you go through this any longer You've been a physical wreck because you know that you haven't been truthful with us. A lot of things that you said are true, but there's so many more that aren't, and you're leaving so much information out. We know that. You have to sit there and ask yourself. Yes, he knows. Bill knows. Everyone knows. But what you have to do now is get the strength in you to tell us why it happened. I have some pretty good reasons there why it happened. Like I, to me, it was a form of abuse here because you can't do that to a person. You can't. This is Canada. We're in the 21st century here. You cannot take everything out of a person. You can have expectations for your kids, but you can't expect them to do th everything the way you want it. Okay. It's just like your dad said about it, fixing everybody else's home, but not fixing his own. Okay, it's the same with you. Okay, he was trying to make a future for you bigger than it should have been, and in the process of his love for you, he made the mistake of actually pushing you away. Right? All his good intentions. What happened? All his good intentions went the other way because he made too high of expectations on a young woman. We know that, Jen. You know that. And now's the time to get it out in the open here, right? You know the importance of telling the truth when it really counts, and you know what it does to you as a as a person when you have to deny things that you know are true. Right? It doesn't feel good, does it, Jen? It doesn't feel good to have secrets, does it? No. You have to let me know what happened here, okay? Okay. But you were involved, right? That's the part we need. Okay. We need to hear that from you because we know you were. We're going to talk this out and figure out what happened. I'm going to make it easy on you, Jen. All you have to do is tell me that you were involved, right? I'm right, aren't I? You know it. We know it. It's plain as day. I'm 100% correct here. I wouldn't be sitting here saying this if it wasn't, Jen. Okay. But we have to get through this. You have to get through it. Yes, people came into your house that night. Yes, that part's true. The descriptions you've given, you've held back. You haven't been straightforward. Okay, I know that. Okay. I, 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 No, you haven't. Okay, we know that. Okay, let's get it out on the table here, Jen. Okay, it's not true. Okay, you were involved in this, right? You knew before that night that this was going to happen. I'm going to make that easy on you. That's a true statement, right? You knew before that night that they were coming. 
right? That's all I need, Jen. Let's get the truth out here now. You knew before they came that they were coming, right? Right? Be honest with me, Jen. Give me that. All right? You knew before they got there that they were coming. All right? Now, the good thing is here that you didn't actually shoot anybody. That's a positive in this situation. Because you couldn't do that. You're not that type of person. All right? And a lot of people do do that. A lot of kids make the mistake of going out and doing it themselves, okay? You couldn't do that, I know that. I know that, and that's a good thing. But you did make a mistake because you got involved in it. Jennifer, you don't need to live with this pain anymore. Let it out. Look at me, Jim. Let's be honest with each other. I've been nothing but honest with you here today, and I hope you can do the same with me. I'm here to listen. It's not worth it anymore. It's hurting you. What oh, I need to know the details. I can't even say. But I can tell you one thing is that we already know, so you can't change that. Then why did you stop? I know you did. But it got too far ahead of you, right? You didn't see, you didn't think this far ahead, did you? But once they started, once they came in, you couldn't stop it, could you? Could you? Jen? Hmm? Why didn't they stop? I know. Why didn't they stop for you? Hmm? But you were part of the planning, right? You have to tell me that part, and then we're going to work through it together. Do you know what I'm saying? You didn't want this. To, you wanted to stop it. You have to prove that to me now. Because at the end of the day, we have to stop this from happening to someone else. Right? What happened to me? Jen, we're going to have to deal with it one step at a time, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. I need to know what you did. And then you and I are going to work through this together. Because the most important part is, of this whole thing is that we do the right thing for your mom. Right? I am her voice right now. I'm working for your mom. That's my job. And I have to get to the bottom of this for your mom but I need you with me on it, okay? I want you to step back for a minute and think, what would your mom want you to do right now? And I know she's a good woman and she's taught you all your life that, Jennifer, no matter how bad it gets, no matter what you've done wrong, you can come to me and tell me. And I'll understand, right? Dan, you need to talk to me. Okay, but let's get back to how they got there, why they got there, okay? Because we know that you helped get this thing in order, right? That's what we need to start with. Then we're going to work through the case, okay? But we got to start... Well, I don't know at this point. 
okay, because I don't know what you're going to tell me other than that you were involved, but I need to hear it. Okay? But I can tell you one thing. I'm going to sit here as long as it takes for you to get this off your chest, okay? Do you know what I mean? Do it. What's that? Okay, you need to tell me how you got involved in this. We know that, Jen. We need to talk about that. Okay? You wanted it to stop, then you have to stop this right now. Okay, because this needs to stop. You can't go around like this anymore. Hiding secrets from your own family. They know, Jen. They know. They're not going to be surprised. What they're looking for you to do right now is to do the right thing. That's what I'm looking for. That's what you're looking for. Right? You know what? What I tell people is just tell the truth. Okay? And we're going to sit down here and we're going to get to the bottom of it. Okay? Together. Okay? Jen? What happened? How did it start? And I'm talking before that day. How did it start before that day? How did this thing get in motion? There was a plan ahead of time, and I want to know about the plan. You can do that. Okay? Be strong, Jen. Jen? Be strong here. What you have to remember is that we're not offside here. Okay, we know already that it happened. There's absolutely no doubt that you were involved in this, or we wouldn't be sitting here right now. You've been waiting and wondering when the police were going to ask you or tell you this. You thought it was going to happen the last time you were here, right? Stay with me, Jen. Let's get through this. You're sorry you're out now, are you not? Are you sorry for what happened? Pardon? You wish you could take it back? Jen? Okay, that's good to hear. That's so positive. You wish it didn't happen, right? That night you wish you'd never got this plan in motion, right? Right? You wish you never told anybody to do this, right? Jen? You gotta get it off your chest. And I'm looking for the Jennifer that knows the right from wrong. Are you there? Yes, okay, sit up and let's talk. Okay, I know this has been hell for you. You have gone through hell for years. All you were looking for is a break, a chance to be on your own, to make your own decisions, to be Jen. Right? That's all you were looking for. Right? Right? You felt cornered. You felt like you didn't have any other options. Right? Jen? You didn't have another option, did you? At the time, you felt like this was the only thing you could do. 
but once it started that night, you wish you could have stopped it so much, right? Ken? You wish you could have stopped it. How did it start, Ken? Eh? Look at me. How did it start? What was your plan? Let's just go through the plan that you had, okay? Let's start there. We know that you weren't the one that pulled the trigger. We know that. And we know that you would have, you could have stopped this whole thing. We know that. But we also know that you were involved from the start. Okay? And what this all was, was a latch, this effort to live your own life. To be your own person. To make your own decisions. Right? It would happen to anybody in the same circumstances. Now I do a lot of reading. And over 300 kids in North America every year are involved in their parents' deaths. Okay? And when we look into those cases, there's always a common factor. That those kids have had to live up to expectations that weren't reasonable. That they weren't being treated the way a human being should be treated. The house rules were just so out of whack and you know that because look at all your friends. Look at all the people around you. Does anyone else have a curfew for 9 o'clock at 24 years of age? Jen? Do you know anybody else with those expectations? Yes or no? Hmm? Yes or no? Do you know anyone that has be under the pressure that you're under? No. I myself don't know of anybody and I investigate these all the time. I've never seen someone under 24 years of age that has to have gone through what you've gone through. The taking of the love of her life out of her life. The decision to make her own decisions. You had no choice here, Jen, I know that. And anybody else in your situation would have done the exact same thing. The only thing different is I would say that they'd have done it a lot earlier. They would have looked for a way out. You've tried everything. You've told them, but no one listened. They didn't listen, Jen. Now, I want you to ask, I want you to answer a simple question for me, okay? Can you do that? Look at me for a sec here. Look at me for a sec. I have a simple question for you. I just want to hear yes. Okay? You knew this was going to happen, right? Jen? Jennifer? Let's work through this together, okay? It's okay. You made a mistake. You made a mistake that you can't change. 
but you can change the fact that you're not going to keep making these mistakes. Right? You don't want to keep making these mistakes, do you? Ken? You want to be a part of the solution, not the problem? You want to be a part of the solution here? Ken? Okay. When did you first start planning this? When did you first plan this? Just give me a date. Ken? When did you first start planning this? When was the final straw? What was the final straw? And that's what this is all about. Hmm? What was the final thing that did it? Hmm? be a good person here? Okay. And you know when a good person makes a mistake, they have to face that mistake, right? Right? What do you think should happen? I don't know. What would you like to see happen in this case? What's that? Justice for your mom. Okay. So, to get that justice, we have to nail the whole story, right? Well, one thing is that you're going to be Jen again, right? That, I can promise you, you're going to be a person making decisions for Jen. You're going to prove to people that you know what the right thing to do is. That's what is going to happen. You're going to have the chance to explain to me why this got out of hand. You know what I mean? But that's where we have to start. I can't make any promises to you. Okay? You know that. But I can promise I'm going to sit here and listen, and we're going to get justice for your mom. That's what I can promise you. We're going to get justice for your mom. I want to work together with you to get it, though. That's the only way. Right? You can understand that. We have to work together now, Jen. We can't be on opposite sides here. There's going to be justice for your, for your mom. It has to be a partnership. You and I have to work together, and we'll get that, okay? So how did this start? Jen? Do it for your mom. That's all this is about. I've watched you and all these statements. Okay? And, you know, I know what the truth is, and I know that you loved your mother, and I've told everybody that. I said, the worst thing about this whole thing is that poor girl loved her mom, but she got involved over her head. And every word you heard from your mom, it affected you. I know this is the whole worst thing about this whole thing. And you'd give anything just to talk to her one more time, right? But she needs to understand what happened, what went wrong here. 
okay? So I want you to pretend that I am your mom. And get it off your chest. I want you to think of you telling your mom what went wrong. Okay? And then we're going to get justice for mom. And we're going to do it together. Okay? Jen, can we work together? Can you and I work together on this? Okay, let's... This is a plan that went wrong, okay? You had a plan. You have to tell me about that plan. Then we're going to work through the rest of it, okay? So we have to start with you. Okay? Because you got those people there. Okay? You set this in motion. Okay? We have to know how that happened. And we're going to figure out it together, okay? All right? That's what your mom wants right now. She's watching us here. She's wondering, is Jen going to make the right decision here? Is Jen, after all of this, going to come out on top doing the right thing? Is she going to be truthful now? Because then, really, all these other things that you've done in your life, you know what? Everybody's lied to their parents. Okay? That's just life. Okay? I have a daughter, too, and she's lied to me. And it hurts as a parent. But at the end of the day, what do we want our kids to do? We don't mind so much if they make a mistake, but we don't want them to keep making the mistakes, right? Jen, that's what it's all about. That's Someday you're going to be a parent, and you're going to want the same thing for your kids. Right? And you want to be able to say to a kid honestly that no matter what, you can tell me. And right now, if your mom was sitting with me here, that's all she would expect is that you tell Phil what went wrong here so that there can be justice. Okay? It goes beyond just yourself here, okay? We have to think of your mom, okay? She's the most important. There's really nothing else for me that's more important. I'm her voice here today. That's who I work for, okay? Do you know what I'm saying? As a police officer, I have to work for the people that don't have a voice anymore. I have to sit and figure out what went wrong in every case in order that justice can get done. And that's what you want, right? Because we both want the same thing, Jen. Right? Okay, where did this start? Take your time. I want to talk about what happened before that night even came. That's what we need to talk about, okay? What happened before that night? I'm with you to hear to hear. We're going to figure it out together, okay? What happened? Jen? Be strong. Be strong for mom. I'm here for you, Jen. I'm here for your mom. Well, you have to tell, it's one of those situations, you know what, we know that what you did, okay? But you have to be able to explain to me what happened, okay? I can't tell you what's exactly going to happen to you, okay? It's like telling you something without knowing the facts, right? Okay? At this point, I know 100% that you were involved. 
and this was planned out ahead of time, okay? But you need to tell me where things went with this, okay? It's the truth that's going to tell me what's going to, I can give you a better answer, but if you don't give me that, do you know what I mean? I don't want to lie to you here. Do you know what I'm saying? Can you see what I'm saying, Jen? I'm not going to lie to you. But I, I prefer to deal with this at one step at a time. You need to get it out first, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss this so the justice for your mom gets done. That's your priority, isn't it? But I told you okay. the description of what I remember. Okay. okay, but that's not everything, okay? You didn't, you weren't straightforward with that, okay? You know that, and I know that, right? You didn't give us everything. You misdescribed no, that. Yes, everything. Jen. Jen, we're past that. Okay. But what That's I not said the, is what I remember okay. about them. Like okay, but, how I remembered them. Okay, but it's impossible because we have another witness. Your dad was right there. Okay, and there's no way that you could get those descriptions mixed up. Okay, we know that. Okay, so let's not go there. Let's go with what we can deal with. Okay. What I need to deal with, though, is, okay, you did not pull the trigger, right? Let's deal with what you didn't do, okay? Right? You weren't a part of that, right? That's positive to know. Okay, but we need to know what you were involved in and what you weren't involved in. Now, we know that you didn't shoot anybody. That's a positive, right? You could never do that, could you? No. But before that night ever happened, you knew it was going to happen, right? Let's start there. That's what we need to talk facts here. Okay, that's... I don't want to get into an argument about what happened that night because it happened. Okay? Right? And you wish you could have stopped it. Is that true or not? Or are you just saying that to me? Well, if I could stop it, I would have stopped it. Okay. Did you try to stop it that night? Yes. How? I wanted to go be with my parents. I wanted to go be with them. Okay, I understand that. Okay. But this all started off with the decisions that you made. Okay, those guys didn't show up there to take your money. Okay, we all know that. They came there to do what they did, to shoot your parents. Okay, we know that. Okay, and they didn't get there randomly. Okay, they just didn't decide that we're going to show up here tonight and pick this house randomly. Okay, this was set in motion before that night. Okay. And I'm asking you to be responsible here in your answers, Jen. You couldn't stop it once it started. I appreciate that. Okay? Right? But what I'm going to say to you is that before it even happened is where you made your bad decision, right? You got those people to come to your house the plan that you put in motion okay so that's what we have to deal with here okay now do you want justice or not for mom okay look at me then because I'm gonna get it for you but we have to do it together okay tell me how this started Because that's what you haven't told us, Jen. You left that part out. Okay? That's the part I want to hear. That's the part that's going to get us justice here. Okay? Then we can work through the rest of it. You can help us with the rest of it after that. Do you want to help us? Jen? Yes. Okay. I'm glad to hear you say that. Okay, so you need to tell me 
how you made this plan. Okay? That's all that's missing here. The rest, we know what happened. I'm, I don't need you to tell me what happened in that house. I already know. Okay? I'm not going to go through that again. Okay? What happened that night was unfortunate. Okay? That, it, but what's happened after that to you, it's destroyed you, this whole thing. Right? What are you going to do now, Jim? To make this right? That's what you're faced with. And you can help us. You just have to be brave here. You have to be brave. You have to actually really want justice for your mom. Okay, then you're going to have to show me. You can't just say the words, you got to mean it. Okay? Now, how did this get started, Jen? What did you do that you wish you didn't do now? Tell me that. What things did you do that you wish you didn't do? Okay, John. What did you do that you wish you didn't do? That's going to help us here. Okay, you can tell me.
future. supposed to take you? What? Okay. So, you're supposed to take the whole family out? No, just me. What went wrong? I don't know. Okay, so tell me how that happened then. Okay. It was supposed to be you. Is that right? Okay, how was it supposed to happen then? Hmm? Okay again. What happened? Oh no. Why did it change? I don't know. Okay, what do you know? How come it was supposed to be you? Did it start? What was the plan then? Hmm? Jen? You have to help me here. We need that justice for Mom now, right? It wasn't supposed to be Mom. Is that, is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Okay. What about your dad? Why was it supposed to be you? Well, everyone could be free from me. <laughs> okay. So, why did it happen this way then? I don't know. Okay. How did they get there? I don't know. You knew they were coming though, right? Because you said it was supposed to be you, right? So what had you done ahead of time to make them come there? What was... What did you tell them to do? Dan? Let's work this out, okay? Let's work it out for a moment. Is it supposed to be you? Everyone could be free from me. I was disappointed in everything. Okay, but why did it have to happen this way? Yeah. Because when I tried suicide, I failed. When? A couple of months ago. What did you do? I couldn't do it. I thought it Okay. So then, how did we get to this point? You told these guys to come and kill you? Jen? Yeah. Okay, so who did you tell? What did you tell them? What did you want done? <laughs> How? Did it matter? <laughs> okay. So who did you get to do this then? You have to tell me, Jen. I don't know who he is. I just got his number. Okay. And... What's his number? I don't memorize it. Where can we find it? On the cell phone. I'm on, on the other cell phone, on the bell cell phone. On the bell cell phone? Yeah. 
Where's that phone now? I don't know what this one card is. Okay. And how did you get a hold of this person? Called him up. And what did you say to him? Okay, I appreciate that. How did it happen? How did they get there? I don't know how they got there. What was your request? Come in. Take me up. How would they know who you were? did you discuss with this person? Did I have money? And that to come take me out and then take it. And how much was he gonna charge for it then? Okay. And that's what you gave him. Okay. Now the guy you spoke to on the phone is the guy that showed up and you gave the money to. I don't know if that was the same guy. I've never met him before. Okay. What was? Did he say his name was? It was the calm homeboy. Okay. Homeboy. How did you get his number to make this call in the first place? set you up with this guy? So when you had those meetings, what did you ask him? What did you tell Rick you needed? I wanted to be shot or killed. Okay. I didn't matter. What did he say? Okay. So when did you make that call? I had to tell him what you wanted, though. I told him that I wanted to be killed. And did he think that was something crazy? He said, are you sure that's what you want? And I said, yes. Because I don't think many people get that request. Do you? No, but that's what I wanted. And he asked me over and over just to make sure I was sure. And I said, I was sure. Okay, so what did you ask him to do then? Come take me out and then leave. Okay. Why did they do it when you were, um, when your parents were there then? Never alone. In the nighttime. Okay. So that meeting you had with Rick, you told him what you wanted? No. I just said that I wanted, if you knew anybody who could take care of something that I needed, just that I wanted to be killed. And he said what? Here's the number. Did he have the number with him that day? Yes. Okay. And that was the first meeting? Second meeting. Okay. What happened with the first meeting? Nothing. I said we just got to know each other. Okay. 
When you had the first meeting with him, why did you have the first meeting? Because they said he was a roommate of a friend of mine, and that they were having problems with rent. Okay, so you phone him up and have another meeting. Is that the meeting that someone saw you at? And who was it that saw you there? I don't know. My uncle told me that another person that saw me there was a black person. Okay, and was that black person Rick? I guess. Well, were you with any other black guy there? No. So you know him as Rick? Yep. Okay. And you told him what that day then? If he knew anybody who could help me take care of the job, that I wanted to be killed. Okay. And he said what? He called his number. Okay. Did he write it down? Yes. Where is that number now? I put I, I put it into my phone and then I threw the paper out. Okay. What was the number you put in your phone? I don't memorize the number. It was just on my phone. Well, that, uh, what can you remember about that number though? It had an 8 and a 5 in it. What did it start with? Four one six or six four seven. I don't remember. I just remember the middle numbers had an eight in it. And what about the five? It was like eight five six. I just remember the eight because no one else I have had an eight. Okay. And what phone is that number in then? On the bell line. The same line. Okay. You put it in your phone though. Which phone did you put it in? It was on the SIM card on the iPhone. Okay, but did you still have to put it in like a friend's or a calendar or I gave it, I just kept it and then when he texted me I just kept that in text. Okay, so what's the text that you have? What's up? He sent what's up? And what did you send back? And that's when I sent one point talk. Okay, then what? That he called me once or twice, just basically just wanted me to know, and that was it. Okay, so when did you first talk to the guy? I don't remember anymore. Where did you meet him? I never met him. And what's his name? What did he go by? Homie, homeboy. Did he have an accent? What did he say he would do? He was just like telling me to take care of it. Let me do me. So your specific request to him was what? To come in and make sure he killed me. And what did he say? He said, like, okay, let me do me. Let me do me? What does that mean? Let me do it my way? Okay. Isn't it odd that somebody would give a request like that? Mm -hmm. To kill themselves? He asked me. And he's still going to charge you to do that? Okay, so then what happened? You said you talked a few other times. What were the other talks? He was just like, when? I was just asking him when, and that was it. Okay, so when then? It's just like whenever I have time, whenever I can get people. Okay, well you're not going to show up at your house randomly, you're going to have to know exactly when he's coming. So how did that play out? He texted me, game on. Pardon? He texted me, game on. When did you get that text? Remember the time? Sometime in the evening. What day? That day. Okay, so before they came in, you had a text that said game on? Yes. Okay, and where did that come from? What's your name? Pardon me? What's your name? 
Where did he send it from? Number he had texted me. Which was what? That number I can't remember. Okay. And what time did you get that game on call? I don't know what time. How many minutes before they came in? Oh. Okay, let's get it out. We're working through it. How many minutes before? I don't know. I didn't even realize they were in it. Okay, but they did come in, right? How much before you heard anything? Maybe an hour, two hours. So you were just waiting there for two hours? I was watching TV. Okay, so what time did you get the game on? Where were you when you saw that message first? I was watching TV with Adrian. Okay, so he was there. Did you tell him? No. Who else knows about this? Jen? Yes. Who else knows about this? Me and the people who did it. Okay. And who are they? I don't know who they are. He just said, let me do me. And then that was it. Okay. So he does come into the house, and you're the obvious only young girl there, right? Yeah. Okay. When he came to your, her, your room, yeah. what discussions did you have with the guy that came to your room? The real discussions you had, not what you told us. Where was the money? And I showed him where the money was. Okay. But he obviously said, I'm here to do what you asked. He never said anything like that. What did he say? He just like hands behind your back. So the money you gave him was payment for killing you? Yes. Is that he wanted 2000 Yes. When did he give you that figure of 2000 In one of our phone conversations. Okay, what's that? In one of our phone conversations. Okay. So, in all the phone conversations you had, when was the first one that you had? What month? Well, Jen, this doesn't happen every day that you ask somebody to kill you, so... I honestly, I don't remember, though. Okay. I say you do remember. You're going to have to remember. When's the first time? I really, really don't remember. Okay, Maybe when? September. Like, like for the first time you mentioned this to Rick, when was that? Back in June, right? Yeah. Is that right? Something like that. Well, I mean, spring, summer sometime. Yeah. How come it took so long? Because I didn't know. You didn't know well, what? I'm sure. So when did you confirm 100% you wanted it done? And they accused me of doing something that I didn't do. Who? Okay. Which was what? They accused me of seeing Daniel and, and didn't. Okay, so when was that? I don't know, end of August maybe. Okay, so you got in, in contact with Homeboy and said what? I'd like you to come and take out a 24-year-old girl. And he said? Okay, I'll call you. Then what? And then... Call me back and he's like, are you sure? And he's like, yes. Okay. And then he's like, Okay, then you just let me do me then. He said, let me do me? Yes. Which means what? Let, it, let him do it his way. Okay. Did he discuss ways with you how he would do it? No. Did you request any way for him to do it? To make sure no one else goes around. Okay. And did you tell him who lived in the house? Yes. What did you tell him? 
my parents were home. Okay, and did you tell them where they are in the house? No. What rooms they're in? No. Where they would be? No. So when, why didn't they do it the way you wanted? I don't know. I asked them. I asked them to take me with my mom when they took them away. I realize that, but it doesn't seem to make sense. I know. It doesn't make sense to me. But that's how it was supposed to be. Sit up for a minute, Jen. Okay, look at me. Look at me. Okay. We have... Remember everything I told you about what I do for a living? Okay. I'm an expert in determining truth and half-truths. Okay. What you've just told me is half the truth. Okay? Now, what I do believe is that you went to somebody. And I do believe that night you paid them the $2,000. Okay? That's the true part. Okay? Right? But what's not true is it was never for you. Okay, Jen, no. Okay, you went to this person and you asked them to do a job. And the job was for your parents. Okay, that's what we got to get to here. Okay, I know that's what really happened, Jen. Okay, that's what really happened. Okay, so you've done good here. You're telling me half the truth. I'm going to get the other half out here. Okay, that's the part that you need to get to now. Okay, maybe you were supposed to be part of it, but you definitely wanted your parents out of the picture. Okay, that was uh, for sure. Okay, so s sit up and listen to me for a minute because this is important, okay? Now listen. Because of how you've been treated for the last seven, eight years of your life, you no longer know how to tell the whole story, the truth from the start, okay? You've been conditioned just to tell little bits of the truth and little bits about lies, right? That's what you've done for eight years now. That's how you've lived. It's an instinct now, okay? And that's part of your self-preservation that I talked about earlier, okay? And right now, that's where we're at, okay? That's where we're at. You did ask someone to come to the house, Jen, but it wasn't for you, okay? Pardon? It was supposed to be me. You asked them to do this job on your parents, Jen, okay? Let's be truthful, okay? Nobody's going to come there and get the wrong people, okay? They're not going to tie you up and just kill your parents, okay? That's not going to happen. That's not realistic, okay? That never happened, okay? They were there because you planned this. They were there because you gave the order, okay? And I understand why you gave the order, because you couldn't do it yourself, okay? That's good, okay, Jen? Okay, but they were supposed to take your parents, Jen, and they did that part, okay? Nobody needs, if you wanted to kill yourself, Jen, you're not going to pay somebody $2,000 to do it. I couldn't do it myself. Okay, but there's other ways, okay? And if that was going to happen, they could have taken you outside and done it anywhere. It wouldn't matter, would it? Okay, there's no need to involve other people in this. If you really wanted to die, all they would have had to do is pull up beside you in a car and shoot you. Right? If he told me just to let him do it. Okay, him. but th you're not going to accept that, okay? You're not going to accept that he's just going to randomly do it someday, okay? There's other things that happened on, in this case, Jen, okay? 
You let them in the house. You let them in. We know that. You went downstairs and you opened that door for them. We know that. Jen, you did leave the door open for them, didn't you? Pardon? Yes. Yes. And that's why you went downstairs earlier in the night, right? After your mom got home, what did you do? Went down and said hello. Pretended to check the door. And was it locked? No. You made sure it was unlocked? Yes. Okay, then what? I asked her if it was in a bed for me. She said, I don't know. Okay, so again, we have some truth here. That's good, Jen. We know all along that you let them in, okay? We knew that. I knew why you went downstairs, okay? That was done on purpose, right? You had to let them in, right? Jen? Yes. Okay, now did they tell you to do that? Yes. So what else did they tell you to do? That was it, just to make sure that they had access. Okay, so what was the agreement then? What do you mean? Well, I told you two thousand dollars, and they were supposed to kill me, and then they called me and made sure that they they, they had access. Okay, so how did they do that though? What was the question on the phone? Was it a text or a phone message? It's text, VIP access. What does that mean? I didn't know, and then they just made sure they they can get in. Okay, so you saw a message that said VIP access meaning they could get in, okay. And so what did you text back? I didn't text them back, I called them. Okay, and what did you say? I'm like, what does that mean? Okay, and what did they say? Make sure that there was a way in. Okay, and what did you say would be the best way? I didn't say, it was just like, front door, and he was like, yes. Okay, all right, so. That's good, Jen. I appreciate that because, again, I already knew that's what happened, okay? Your family is going to lock those doors at night, right? That's the routine. So you went down and checked the door and made sure it was unlocked, right? She was going to check it before she went to bed anyway. Okay, but she didn't go to bed till midnight, right? That's why I asked her. Okay, did you say, I've checked the door? No. You didn't tell her? No. Okay. And so when you went back upstairs, did you actually talk to Andrew? No. Or did you just say that? No, I really did talk to him. And the other guy? Ed. I was on the phone with him. Okay. In between those calls, did they call you? Yes. Or did, so how did that play out? Where between those calls did those calls come? This one. Tell me how that happened. That, that's when they got the text. That, that's when I got the text, VIP access. Okay, so you were talking to Andrew, yes. and it had finished, mm -hmm. and then what? He texted me, my VIP access, that's when I hung up and I asked, I called and asked them. Okay, so you hung up from Andrew or yes. from? from Andrew. Okay. And you phoned them? Yes. And said, what do you mean? Yes. And they said? Make sure there's a way in. Okay. And you said? Front doors. Okay. And then? I went down to the front doors. Okay. And what did you do? Make sure if they were locked yet and they weren't. Okay. So how could you tell? Okay. So you checked the... What did you check? The lock. Okay. And did you kind of turn it and turn it back or how? I don't remember it. When you left that door, you were satisfied that it was open? Yes. Okay. Then, what happened? Then everything else I said happened. I went back to my room. I called Ed. I didn't even know when they came in. Okay. But you, they came up to your room. Or somebody came up to you. Well, like I said, I heard my mom call from my dad, and that's when I went out. Yeah. And what happened? And then he was there, standing there. 
Okay, give me one sec, okay? Sorry about that. Okay. So we get to the point where um, you get the text message. Uh, you go down. You do the door. You go back upstairs. And what do you do? Call oh, Okay. Why do you call him? What I usually do. Okay. What were you expecting to happen next? I honestly, I don't know. Because he didn't call me, he just let me do anything. I didn't know how he was going to do anything. Okay, what else did he say on the phone? Like, how, like, he must have told you we're around the corner or something. No. Did he tell you how long? No. Okay, but it was on for that night. He had game on on the text. Yes. Okay. What did you do with those text messages? Okay, and the phone that you were using, were you using two phones that night? Yeah. Okay, you have to sit up because I can't hear you here. You were using two phones, okay. Yeah. So the phone you were talking to with Andrew on was what phone? Mm -hmm. And the one you were talking to them on was what? The iPhone. The iPhone, okay. And then, uh, did you ever talk to them on the Samsung? No. Now, um, what next? And everything else that happened next week has been said. Okay. Now, look at me, Jen. You're almost there. Okay? Most of what happened in the house happened. Okay? We know that. Okay? You gave a description a black guy with dreads. There was no black guy with dreads in there. Okay, we know that. Okay, we know that because your dad's not going to miss that. Okay, he gave a good description of the guy that you were with, and he's not even black. So tell me about that. Honestly, like... Honestly, Jen, that's exactly... you got to be up front here. Okay? Honestly, that's because obviously I... you didn't want to tell us everything because there was a plan. You didn't tell us that that night either. Okay? So but everything now, else that happened okay, after that is... That guy with dreadlocks was never there. Okay, so why did you say that? But that's what I remember. Okay, you can't mix that guy up with the description your dad gave. He's not even the same color. Right? But that's... Tell me why you said guy with dreadlocks. Because that's who I Because saw. there was no guy with dreadlocks there, Jen. That's the problem here. Okay? That's the problem. Okay, now, the issue here is this, and you have to look at me. Okay, your dad wasn't supposed to be a witness. Okay, that's where this whole thing went wrong. Okay, your dad wasn't supposed to live. Okay, and when he did live, he was able to tell us what really happened that night. Okay, 
which was in conflict with what you told us, okay? Seriously in conflict, okay? You had all these things about number two going upstairs and everything else. Number two was down there with a gun on your mom. Number he three was down, he didn't, okay? We know that never happened, okay? I don't want to argue about it, okay? I'm not going to argue about it. But I've already gone this okay? far. I, You've gone I'm this far, you. but that doesn't mean, okay, what, now, let's get it all straightened out, because you, this is a total, Half and half, we're, we're there again, just like the school, just like everything else. This is how you deal with pressure, okay? You give half and you hold half. You give half and you don't give the rest of the true facts, okay? That's your stress mechanism, okay? That's what you've been trained to do since you were 15 years old, okay? Because your parents could never accept the truth. That's why this whole thing happened, okay? No matter how honest you try to be with them, okay? They didn't, they always wanted more. It was never good enough. It was never good enough that you were a good kid, okay? And that you loved figure skating and piano. And if that's all you ever did, that's good enough. But it wasn't good enough for them. Right? Jen? So what happened here? I'll tell you what happened. You made a specific request, and the job was for your mom and dad, okay? Nobody's going to come in there and do the wrong job, okay? Nobody's going to do that. They came, you paid, and they did what they were supposed to do, okay? If it was supposed to be for you, you would have said that to them, okay? You never did. Okay, this was always for two people, okay? This was for both mom and dad, because they had taken things too far in your life, Jen, okay? That's what it's all about, and you and I have to get that out right now, okay? So s sit up for a minute. Let's get this final piece out, okay? Because that's the only mistake you made in this whole thing. You got fed up and you went out and did something about it, okay? This was all about self-preservation. You had no choices. This is the only choice you felt you had left. Jen, I know that's why you feel so bad about this, okay? It's because, because it was supposed okay, to no, Jen, you have to be honest with me here. I am being Jen, honest with you Jen, here. okay, it's all going to come out, okay? And the last thing that you want to happen later, okay, is for people to say that she didn't tell the whole truth. Okay, this is your but one that chance. That's what I do remember. Okay, okay, but you made a request, Jen, and this was a planned request, okay, and the plan was for your parents. Me. Okay, Jen, you have to be honest about it. This is the only thing that's in contention here, okay? You made the mistake, okay? Everybody understands. Everybody in this police department feels sorry for you. I can tell you that right now, okay? Because they've seen what you're going through. It's so obvious, okay? That all this tension they put out, it, basically this is like a volcano, all right? And at one point it was just too much and you erupted, okay? And you made a bad decision, okay? And once you hired this guy, there was no turning back. There was, it was supposed to be yourself, Jen, no, it, it would not happen that way, okay? It would not happen that way. Now, in the original story, you said that you hid your cell phone, okay? If it was for you, you wouldn't have hid your cell phone. That would have never happened. So it, it's in conflict. It's not hidden. It's just I, I put it there naturally. Okay. It's what I naturally do. Okay, but you said on tape that you hid it there and that they didn't know about it. That's your language, not mine, Jen. Which tells me that you intended to use it sometime to get out of there as a rescue mechanism. Okay? So, I already know that you planned this, Jen, and it wasn't for yourself. We know that, Jen. You know that. I know you don't feel good about it, and I know you've thought many times that it, you would not like to be here, okay? But who caused that? Why did you feel like that? 
Okay? I'll tell you why. It's because of the way you've been treated all these years. You didn't bring that on yourself. They brought it on you. The depression. You were cutting yourself and they didn't even pick up on it. All they wanted was so much success out of you, they were not even looking at you as a person. They were looking for a success story. Instead of just saying, whatever Jen wants is what's good for us. Whatever she's happy with. As long as she's happy in her life, I'm happy with it. If she wants to work at Eastside Mario's for the rest of her life, that's fine. If she wants to be a piano teacher, that's great. If she wants to continue figure skating, that's wonderful. Do you know what I'm saying, Jen? I know what you're saying, but okay. this is what I know. Okay. And I've okay, so the only thing that you haven't told me is that you put the plan in motion for your parents, okay? And now, you would wish you never did, and that's good, okay? It's good that you feel sorry about it, because you do. If you could go back, you wouldn't have gave that plan to them, would you? But Jen? I knew what they were going to do, it wouldn't okay, have done. Okay, Chad, look at me. You knew what they were going to do, okay? Listen, let's be rational here for a minute, okay? Nobody makes a plan to have themselves killed in that fashion, okay? Nobody shows up at your house for no reason and kills the wrong people. Okay? That's where we're at here. Okay? That's what you're afraid. You're afraid to say that you made that mistake. Don't be afraid, Jen. Just tell the truth. Okay? Because we're getting into what's happened to you all your life. Okay? I know exactly when and when you're not telling me exactly what happened. Okay? you got to give us some credit here. This is all that I do, okay? And you're halfway to telling the whole truth, okay? This is another case of making something up in hopes that somebody will listen and accept it, okay? I can't accept it, okay? You know that and I know that, right? I can't accept that when I know it's not true, and I don't like to see you doing this to yourself. You're just beating yourself up some more here. Okay? Jen? Because I'm telling it to you, but you say that it's contradicting, and I don't okay. understand why. Well, it doesn't make sense, okay, that someone, if, they, if you wanted yourself killed, okay, they wouldn't do it in your house. Okay? There's no reason to hide anything. Okay? Someone can just walk up to you and shoot you somewhere where you're by yourself and nobody knows about it and they walk away. But I'm never by myself. Okay, at any time you can go out. You were by yourself all day. But they said that they can't do it in the daytime. Okay. So you could walk out the front door and they could have shot you there and ran away. Like, they didn't have to involve other people, and that's why it doesn't make sense. You could have walked out on the front porch, and that would have been the end but of I'm it. But I'm not supposed to leave the house. Okay, but you've done it before, right? Right? Not since they started watching me Okay, better. but that night you could have walked out that front door, and no one would have known the difference for two seconds. My mother would know she was right, out, right there. Okay, but they could have came and done it. Okay? But they didn't tell me how they were going to do it. Okay. Why would somebody shoot someone they didn't have to shoot? I don't know. I can't figure that out. And actually not shoot the person they're supposed to shoot? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure it out. Okay, why didn't you tell us this that night then? Because I was scared. Scared of what? Telling the truth? Yes. But I wanted to die. But okay, but listen, if you wanted to die, you would tell us everything because it wouldn't matter. Jen, if you really wanted to die, you would tell us everything because it doesn't really matter. 
right? It does matter because the wrong person got hurt. And my dad is suffering. I appreciate that's what happened in the end, but that's what was supposed to happen, okay? The good thing about this is your dad did live, okay? He did live. And that went against the plan, okay? He wasn't supposed to make it through, and he did. So that's a good thing, right? That's a positive in this situation, right? Jen? My dad's hurt. How can that be a positive? Okay, but he's not dead, is he? No. Okay. And this thing started out with him supposed to be dead. No. Okay. Jen, there's just no doubt about that. Okay? There's no doubt about that. Okay? And you got to remember, we're all over this case, okay? And when you say something that's going to contradict what other people tell us, okay? that the order was for mom and dad, that's not going to look good, is it? When it comes from someone else. Right? Because we're going to solve this thing. Okay? We already know what happened. So I'm not in here guessing with you. I already know what the order was from. From you. Okay? And I have to sit here with you and let you get that off your chest, okay? I know it's not easy, and that's what you're worrying about. The order was from me, but okay. it was for yeah. me. No, it was for your parents, Jen, okay? And that's hard to say, I know that. I know that's hard to say, okay? Because that's not, if you could make this decision over, you would change it, okay? You would change it, right? Of course. If okay. I knew who was going to get hurt, of okay. course I wouldn't. Jen, you knew who was going to get hurt. That's the whole issue here. Okay, that's the whole issue here. That's all we're dealing with here. Okay? From the start, I've told you that I know you were involved. Okay? And it's beyond asking someone to kill you. Okay? The order was for mom and dad. Okay? The only mistake they made is they didn't get your dad. Okay, yes, they hurt him, okay? Yes, he's injured, but he's alive, and that's a good thing. And as I told you earlier, this happens to 300 families a year. 300. And it's always because of the same thing, Jen. The people reach the end of their rope. It's the last straw, and they make a mistake. And I agree, once you put those wheels in motion, you know, it's hard to stop it. It's very hard to stop it. So let's get down to the bottom of this, Jen. you got to help me through the rest of this. Okay? Now, the only thing that's an issue here today is that you gave a request to these people for your parents and they carried it out, okay? You didn't do it. That's a good thing, okay? You didn't shoot them. You didn't hurt them. Your mistake was making a request, right? That's where you and I are at right now. Okay, that's the only issue we need to talk about. Okay, I'm not going to get into everything else because it's not even important. Okay? But we need to see justice done here. And we need to do that together, Jen. Okay? And there's only one face to justice, okay? That's the face of truth. Right now, we only have half that face. Okay? I need to see the rest of it. Okay? We're only halfway there. Okay? You made the mistake of asking them to do it. Okay? You asked them to do your parents. That's it's as simple as that, Jen. Okay? And they did. Or they tried to. Okay? 
But you're sorry that this happened, right? Of course. Okay, that's what the whole key is here. Everyone wants to know, is, is she sorry? Because everyone knows that you did it, okay? But they want to know, is given a chance and turning back the clock to that day, would you do it again? No, right? This was a one-time mistake, right? Jen? Okay. You gave them the plan for your parents, right? That's all I need to hear. No. Jen, you did. No, and this is not going to go anywhere because I wanted them to kill me. Okay, maybe you wanted that to happen as well, okay? And maybe things got so bad that that's how you feel, okay? But your parents were brought into this, okay, on your request. Yes, Jen, this was your request. Okay, and that's what we have to deal with. Okay, and that's what you're afraid of here today. That's what you're afraid of. No one's thinking bad of you here. Everybody understands what you went through. Okay, and what you are going through. Okay, but what people are looking for from this young woman today, you know what they're looking for? Jen? To know that you actually are sorry. Okay, that you're sorry that you made the request for your parents. Okay. It wasn't for you, we're past that, okay? I don't want to talk about that, okay? The request was for your parents and your parents only. That's it, okay? That's what you put in motion, that's what happened, okay? We know that, okay? At the end of the day, you have to look at yourself and say, when Bill came to me with the answer, did I deal with it? Okay, because that's where people are going to be looking at you now from. They're going to be saying, what did she do when the police knew and confronted her with the truth? Did she face reality and admit the truth? Or did she run from it? Does she even care what happened? Of course I okay. care what happened. Okay, so you have to prove that now, Jen, because the only way you can prove it, that you really care, is that you admit that you made a mistake. I did make okay. a mistake, okay. but... We have to get that on the table, though, and it's not about you, okay? It's about them. It's that simple, okay? It's not complicated, okay? Is that what you want me to say, but that's not yes. how what happened, tell me though. what happened. You want me to tell... I want you to tell me that you made the plan for your parents, okay? But that's We're not going to get to the rest of it anyways, okay? We already... Like, I'm in here, okay? There's 20 other investigators on this case. I'm only dealing with the truth as it regards to you, okay? There's a lot more things that you don't even know that I know. That's why you're not going to be able to tell me things, okay, that I don't know already, okay? So I will know when you're telling me the full truth. I already know you made the plan, so I can't just say, okay, yeah, don't worry, buddy, you made the plan for yourself, when I know that's not true, okay? you got to know that I already have the answers, okay, or we wouldn't be sitting here, okay? So I do need you to tell me that you made the plan for your parents, okay? Because that's what really happened, Jen, okay? I'm not asking you to lie to me. I'm just I'm asking you to lie. tell me that you made the plan for your parents. That's where we're sitting here right now trying to deal with, okay? That's a big hurt for you, okay? Because I know that you still have love. It's like a love-hate thing, and that's what happens in people's lives. Okay? You love them to death, but you can't live with them. You can't live with the situation anymore. Okay? That can happen in life. It happens all the time, okay? And essentially, you got forced into a corner here. Okay? You didn't have any other choices. 24 years old, Jen, and you're not allowed to make your own decisions. A prisoner in your own house. Nine o'clock curfew. Again, I'm just surprised it never happened before this. Everybody's going to understand that, Jen. But why they're going to understand it? You know why they're going to understand it? Because that's the truth. What people don't understand is when people tell half-truths. They recognize it right away. They recognize that that's not what really happened, okay? That's not what really happened, okay? You've spent a lifetime trying to get around people, and all it has ever done is hurt you more, Jen. 
you missed out on an education because you tried to fake it, okay? You missed out on things that made you want to kill yourself. And you realize that. And it reached a low point to the point where if you don't care about yourself, you can't care about other people. You know what I mean? You can't care for other people if you can't love yourself. And that's where this got to, Jen. And I don't blame you. But we need to understand this together, right? We need to have a resolution here. Okay? Stuck. Okay. Can we understand each other, Jen? Okay? You've told so much of the truth, you're just not telling the final portion. This isn't even half truth anymore. This is three quarters, okay? The only thing missing is a quarter of the truth, okay? The rest is true, okay? We know that, okay? We know you got the text. We know that you gave the go-ahead, okay? But the go-ahead wasn't for yourself. That's what's that issue here, Jen. We're going to sit down here and work through this together. Okay, we're going to work this out. We're going to get the full truth because you know what? This full truth is only 100%. Not 75%, not 90, not 99. 100% everything that really happened that night. Okay, Jen? All right? Let's do it together. Okay, you did. I don't understand okay. why it doesn't add okay. up. Why it doesn't add up is because that's not what happened, okay? The truth will add up. Half-truths don't add up. That's all they ever are is half-truths. Now, we have to understand each other, Jen. All I need to know... Well, you've already told me that you made the plan. Okay, it, the only issue we have here is that you made it for your parents, and we know that. And I need you to tell me that. Okay? Okay? Tell me what happened. I told you what happened. Okay, all of it. You it did. Okay, all you have to do is here is tell me right now that Bill, yes, I made a mistake. Bill, yes, I made a mistake. This plan was for my parents. That's all we're, all, that's the only issue here. Not about everything that happened that night. We know what happened that night, okay? But we also know that you made this plan for them. Not yourself. Okay? Or it's not going to go to that. Okay, give me a second.
Okay. I need you to listen close to me, okay, Jen? At this point in the investigation, okay, I'm going to be arresting you for murder, okay? Also attempted murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Do you understand that? Just have to tell me if you understand those charges. Just say yes or no. Yes. Okay. It is my duty to inform you that you have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. Do you understand that? And what does that mean to you? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. You also have the right to telephone any lawyer you wish. Do you understand that? You also have the right to free advice from a legal aid lawyer. Do you understand that? 1-800-265-0451 is a toll-free number. You have to listen here. So can you take your hands off your ears? I need you to listen. There's a toll-free number that will put you in contact with a legal aid lawyer for free legal advice. Do you understand that? So you can speak to a legal aid lawyer right now or a, a lawyer of your choice if you like. Do you understand that? Do you wish to call a lawyer now? Yes? Okay. Do you have a lawyer that you know of to speak to? Okay. What I'm going to do is read you some other things and then we're going to deal with your lawyer, okay? We'll, we'll deal with how we're going to get that. So, you may be charged with murder, attempted murder, and conspiracy to commit murder in relation to your mother and father. Those are where those charges stem from. Do you understand that? Just yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Do you wish to say anything in answer to those charges? You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yes? You just have to speak a little louder. Yeah. Okay. Again, I've already given this to you, but I'm going to read it. If you have spoken to any other police officer or anyone with authority, or if any such person has spoken to you in connection with this case, I want it clearly understood that I do not want it to influence you in making any statement. Do you understand? Jen? You just have to speak a little louder. Yes. Okay. okay, so what we're going to do right now is, do you have your own lawyer? No. No? Okay. Do you have a lawyer you would like to speak to that you know of? No. Okay. Would you like to speak to duty counsel? I just want to talk to someone who can help me and understand. Okay, so who would that be? I don't know. So do you have a lawyer? You said that you were on my side. And okay, I, was... I am on your side, Jen. Okay? I know what happened here. Okay? I'm on the side of truth. Okay? I want that to come out here, but at this point, you need to deal with the lawyer you said, okay? I have to honor that request. So what we need to do now before we discuss anything else, okay, is deal with that issue, okay? So we have options, okay? You can, do you know anyone you can get to a lawyer yourself? No. no. Um, I can bring a phone book in here with numerous lawyers and you can look at that if you like and pick a lawyer or we can call duty counsel. They will call back. We'll put you in a private room and you can speak to them in private. Okay, but the decision is yours. What would you like to do? Okay. You do want to speak to a lawyer, though, you said. That's your decision. So I have to accommodate that now. 
Okay, so that's what I want to do for you. I want to accommodate that if that's what you want to do. Okay. Do you want me to call duty counsel for you? Okay. Okay. Or is there any other lawyer that you would like? So at this point, you wish to speak to duty counsel then? Sure. Okay. So what I'm going to have to get you to do is actually empty all your pockets on the table here. Okay? Uh, can you... Uh, I have to tell people who are expecting me that I'm... Gonna... Who's that? My uncle. Okay. We'll speak to them. Uh, can you stand up and just empty your pockets? Just put it on the table here. Okay. okay, anything else? Just pull out those pockets. Okay. Nothing else? Okay. So just have a seat for a minute. I'm just going to check your coat. Okay. Okay, so just sit down. Okay, so in your pockets you had a couple pads, you have one in your jean pocket or with you and you had $200 in cash, is that correct? Did you have any more money? No. Okay, and then you have this change here, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. No. And your cell phone, which I have here. Okay. So in change I have 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. 85, 95, 1 dollar and 7 cents. So 100 dollars, 101 dollars and 7 cents, okay? We'll put that in a bag for you, okay? You need 200 in it. Sorry, 200, you're right. So 201 dollars and 7 cents, two 100 dollar bills, right? Okay, that will be kept with some property for you when I come back in, okay? I'm going to make sure that they are making a call to duty council and we'll line that up and you can speak to the duty council in private, okay? All right, do you have any uh, jewelry around your neck at all? Okay, all right, hold tight while we do that, okay?
We've uh, made a call to duty council and we're just waiting for them to call back, okay? Need a drink of water or anything? What's that? Uh, I do have to uh, go ahead and speak to these officers, but I'll come back and speak to you, okay? Well, we got to get, we got to take care of the lawyers, okay? That's the priority right now, okay?